planning board. There's only one sign-in sheet over here, gentlemen. There's like literally no more room for more than 10 people on it. Well, you felt so. There we go. Thank you. We're going to need probably like three or four more. They were big and they've already had gotten together. For attendance purposes, I'd like to start my last present. Hold on one more. Dennis. Brian, 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 my name is Chairman uh, Brian Falk from Eric O'Connell, attorney on behalf of the applicant. Just to be very transparent, my last name is O'Connell. No similarities to the uh, in Worcester. I just want to be very transparent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, through staff, we understand we're, we're down a member tonight. Yes. And so we're going to continue without testimony. Okay. Um, but while we're here, we just wanted to just note that uh, we received peer review um, reports from the town's peer reviewers. Um, and we think it would be really helpful if the board could give us the okay to have um, our engineers talk to the peer reviewer engineers. I think is it often the case in my line of work, if you just let the engineers talk to each other, we could probably knock out a whole bunch of issues and, and simplify things. So if, if the board is amenable, I think that would be very helpful and be very productive at our, our next year. So you would like your continuation? Correct. Do you, uh, Amy, when can we... Uh, uh, February 8th. Yeah, what, are, what does February 8th look like right now? Right now we have Maple Street, Parcel Street, which will probably continue. WS? No, they're not on until the... 20 seconds. So I think that's doable. Okay, great. Uh, entertain a motion for a continuance to February 8th. I need a uh, motion and a second. So we'll... Second. Made by uh, Brian, seconded by Dennis. I would like, I think, discussion. Again, it's a continuance. I would like to call for the vote. Dennis, I. Brian, I. Bill, I. Bill, I. Nick, I. That passes unanimously. We will see you on the 8th. Thank you very much. Just a clarify. The board's amenable to our engineers talking to the peer reviewers just so we can. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. We can go over if you want. Can we do the continuation for Maple Street? The second item this evening is a continued public hearing for Maple Street LLC, parcel three. Do so anybody want to hear this evening representing? They, they weren't asked to come because they did send an email asking for continuation until um, February 8th. Okay. That's not so um, for Maple, Maple Street LLC, parcel three, they requested a continuation to February 8th. I'll entertain a motion and have a discussion. Do you have a second? Second, Nick. I mean, by Brian, second by Nick. Call for any discussion? Yeah, when's our uh, deadlines at this point? Their deadline is March 29th. March 29th? 20th time? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. And that's your personal three on. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Ben aside. Brian, I. Bill, I. Bill, I. Nick, I. That motion passes unanimously. All right, if they're out there in the audience, thank you very much. The next item is going to be, um, I'm sorry? Maple Street. I'd like to do a uh, public hearing on the scenic road permit for 306 Maple Street. Can I read that for you? Please. Please. Okay, public hearing, uh, scenic road permit, 306 Maple Street. The applicant, 306 Maple Street, LLC, and owner, Andrew Sitchme, apologize if I mispronounced that. The, uh, the project will consist of a single story warehouse exactly. building containing 59,400 uh, 59, square feet, which includes approximately 4,950 square feet of accessory building space at 306 Maple Street in Bellingham, approximately 11.5 acres of land. 
shown on assessor's map 37 parcel 6a zoned industrial the plans were prepared by Allen engineering and associates 140 Hartford avenue Hopedale, mass 01747 thank you Jones. Good evening to the board members. My name is Michael Dryden. I'm a senior project manager with Allen Engineering. Joining me is the owner applicant, Andrew Satcher. And uh, we also have Mark Wallace from uh, Tech Environmental here this evening as part of our team. So we do appreciate you actually taking the scenic road aspect before the site plan because that will allow Mark to do his thing and then hit the road. He has a long drive, so we appreciate that. Um, so just to, uh, to quickly go through what we filed, as you know, we filed a development plan approval um, and then followed that up with the scenic road. There was a little bit of a misunderstanding, I guess I'll call it, but we did uh, finally get these two items to align nicely uh, for you all this evening. So generally speaking, the three aspects of the scenic road permit are um, any impacts to stone walls, uh, removal of trees, and of course, the sound aspect, which is why Mark Wallace is here this evening. So uh, allow me to just talk about the first two items. Uh, there are stone wall, there's a stone wall along the frontage of the property. And with the application, I did submit some photographs, but I do have copies of those photographs that I could easily hand out to the board now. Okay. I only have, I think I have six, so hopefully that. Next slide. So these photos will facilitate discussion for both the stone wall aspect and the trees. I'll just give, uh, allow a moment for that to be distributed. Um, so when we first introduced the project as part of site plan approval, the board suggested that we harvest the stone that's there and utilize it for roundings at the driveway, which is a fairly typical approach. So that's exactly what we've done on the plan that we provided as part of the scenic road permit. Um, I'm classifying the wall um, to be sort of low quality. I mean, it's really, it's it's not really organized. It's it's very low. Uh, in some areas, you can't even perceive that the wall is there. There's about 100 feet worth of stone that we'll collect. And what I would like to do is instead of replace replacing 100 feet is to take 100 feet worth of stone and do a little shorter wall that's more prominent and more visible. I think that makes a lot more sense than to recreate a wall that's you know 12 or 15 inches high in many areas. Uh, so that's what I've depicted on the plan. Um, secondly, um, also nicely demonstrated in those photos are um, the lack of trees. So the scenic road bylaw governs uh, trees, uh, I believe six inches or greater in the caliper um, within the right of way. That stone wall essentially is the right of way. So if you look through the photos, you'll see that there are no trees um, all the way up to the stone wall. We're not removing one tree. Um, of course, we're doing tree removal on the site, but not within the town's right of way. So before I turn it over uh, to Mr. Wallace, are there any questions on those first two aspects? No, at some point though, we may want to see a rendering of what you proposed to do. Okay, I did show it on the plan. Uh, okay. Just I showed the roundings on the plan that was submitted with the application. Okay. Uh, again, it's you'll, you'll you see the nature of the stones that we're just going to utilize what's there. Pretty straightforward okay. uh, approach. <clears throat> so, like the stone wall now has no mortar. It's just I, it's no, yeah, so it's a drywall. You yeah, use every single stone that's there. Then. Okay. Anything else you want? It's really that simple from, from those first two aspects. So again, Mark Wallace is here to talk about the okay. down study aspect of the scenic road bylaw. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Mark Wallace. I'm with uh, Tech Environmental. We've been here before you many yeah. times with some other projects here. Um, so I'm here to provide a, a brief overview of the sound study. I, I assume you have a copy of that in front of you. Um, and I also have a, a, a board here. Um, might be needed, right? So, um, and I'm here to answer any questions on that sound. Okay. So, um, so Tech Environmental performed a sound study with the goal to demonstrate compliance for the project. Uh, you comply with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DP noise policy, and the town of Bellingham zoning and uh, scenic uh, roads noise bylaws. Now, the sound study is a two step process. Um, it requires us to go out and do ambient sound monitoring. And then to do acoustic modeling, which is with a three dimensional model to assess the impacts of the project. And uh, we performed a long term monitoring program 
back in uh, early December, from December 6th through December 14th of 2023, to establish the ambient conditions over a 24 hour period. So we collected measurements over an eight day period, which, which included a, um, a weekend period as well, which tends to have a quieter uh, time periods. Um, and during that time period, we looked at both nighttime and daytime uh, ambient conditions. And uh, again, we're trying to establish what the lowest ambient sound conditions could be uh, at the site and surrounding neighbors. And the uh, sound level was we measured was 34 decibels um, out of the 168 hours of measurements that we took. Um, that's so that establishes the lowest nighttime level that we're using basically to demonstrate compliance with the mass DEP noise policy, which I'll talk about in a moment. During the daytime, we measured a, a daytime level of 42. So about eight decibels higher, as you would expect during the daytime, it's, it's higher during the daytime. Now, one thing to keep in mind um, in our report, we have uh, a figure uh, that shows where our monitoring locations are. It's figure one on, uh, I believe it's on page five. And uh, it shows that we have a long-term monitoring location. And I wanna point out that we, we took that measurement sort of in the back of the property. So we didn't take it um, near the near Maple Street, so we could try to capture the lowest ambient sound condition. Um, in addition to the long-term monitoring that we did, we also took short-term sound measurements in the neighborhood in Stonehenge and Maple Street, um, and those were. It's Figure one. Yeah. Page yeah, four. Page yeah. four. I saw yeah. yeah. Thank you. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so during that time period, we, we, we took those me measurements just to see if there was any big difference between the long-term and the short-term measurements. Um, and we measured 36 to 40 decibels late at night, which is about what we expect at the long-term monitoring location, because again, we're capturing much longer periods of time. Um, and then during the daytime, we measured 46 to 48. Um, and those sound sources are basically dominated by uh, I-495 in the distance and local traffic, as well as industrial and commercial properties on Maple Street. Um, so as I talked about before, there, there are the mass DEP noise policy, which uh, interprets a violation when you have uh, you exceed 10 decibels over ambient, or if you cause a pure tone condition. And a pure tone condition is defined as an octave band sound pressure level uh, that exceeds both of the two adjacent uh, octave bands. So we're looking at different frequencies of sound. So if there's a spike there, we're seeing a, a three decibel spike when comparing the two side by side uh, frequency measurements that's considered a pure tone by, by mass DEP. Um, in addition, we looked at the zoning and the scenic roads noise bylaws. Um, and for those, we have the receivers of zone A and zone B and zone C, zone A being business industrial, zone B being uh, local and any other district within 200 feet of a business or industrial district or within 200 feet of an arterial street. Um, and then the zone three, uh, zone C is all other locations. And so those are primarily the residential locations that we're looking at on Stonehenge and, and Maple Street. Um, the scenic noise bylaw have <laughs> identical sound limits when it comes to daytime. It's the nighttime that they drop uh, from the zoning. So the they're about five to 10 decibels lower, 10 decibels in the industrial area and five decibels lower um, in the uh, zone C area. So in the in this case, we're talking about um, instead of comparing to a 45 limit, which is the zoning bylaw, we're comparing to a 40 limit um, for those places that are zone, um, zone C residential. Um, so, and that's also spelled out in our report. We, we laid that out. And what we do in, in our report on tables eight and nine, on pages 10 and 11, is we, we compare the receptor locations, which we had a number of them on Stonehenge and Maple Street. Um, and then we compared which one was the most stringent limit, whether it was a scenic noise bylaw limit or mass DEP noise policy limit. And in almost all cases, uh, it, was the, it was the mass DEP limit that was the driving force. Um, so with that in mind, we did acoustic modeling with a three-dimensional model that we've done before in other projects here. It takes into account uh, topography and atmospheric conditions. So we have the site grading plan from Allen and Major's uh, site plan. Um, and then we also took into account the topography of the area so that we're getting the representative um, heights for those homes that are in Stonehenge and on, on Maple Street. Um, 
So as part of our analysis, we assume that the facility is going to operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's why we did measurements, you know, for 24 hours at a time. And then did our acoustic modeling analysis, looking at uh, the proposed sound sources, which are rooftop equipment, which run continuously. And then we also have trucks uh, moving in and out of the site, which we represent them as continuous sound sources. And then we have other non, what we call non-continuous sound sources, which are uh, a backup alarm or a trash compactor operating. So they're more periodic than they are with group top equipment or uh, trucks traveling around the site. Um, so as part of that, we did a, a modeling analysis and we saw what, what the impacts were. And then we went back and did additional modeling to look at uh, potential sound walls. Um, and so in the report, we have the figure, which is shown here on the board, um, that um, shows the sound sources. It's sort of a blow up of this, but we have another figure in the report that shows the uh, sound sources, which is cross hash marks. These are the rooftop equipment. This is the building. This is um, a trash compactor. These are trucks idling and backup alarms. And then this line here represents the truck moving around the site. And again, this is a blow up version because I wanted to more focus on what we're proposing for a sound wall for the project. Um, so the the the, uh, the pink line here represents a solid barrier wall that we're talking about, which would be about seven feet tall with the exception of right in the middle here, we'd have a nine foot tall barrier for about approximately hundred feet of that uh, of that barrier zone. And then it would curve around the corner of the site. Um, it would be about seven, seven feet tall as well. Because again, we're trying to capture the sound from not spreading out towards, towards Stonehenge. Um, the uh, proponent is also planning on having a six foot tall fence, which is this purple line here. And again, that's mostly for, uh, it does have some sound attenuation capabilities with it. Um, but because the building is shielding a lot of this, we don't really need to extend that wall, the sound wall, any further than that. And that's all sort of we did in our modeling analysis to see if there was any kind of leakage of sound that might come around the corner of the building. Um, so when we did the analysis, uh, our predicted sound levels were were below the mass DP noise policy limits, as well as the the, uh, the zoning and the scenic noise bylaw limits with the sound wall in place. Um, so it demonstrates compliance with the project with those um, with the noise bylaws and the mass DP noise policy. Um, so I'll take any questions. Yeah. What's the sound wall made of? Um, it could be typically what we what we recommend to our clients is it needs to have a certain density to the wall. So we usually look at four pounds per square foot because we're trying to capture we're trying to uh, reduce particularly like low frequency sounds that you might get from from trucking activities. So you want a solid wall that has some some uh, you know density to it. Um, and we've uh, provided uh, Andrew with some uh, examples of that. There's a company called Durasol that has a composite type of wall that does that. And what we only recommend is that if there's going to be any kind of leakage like underneath the wall itself, because you can't put it all the way down to the ground. We recommend putting crushed stone for, for drainage purposes, but the crushed stone, you know, has that kind of density to to knock down the sound. Do we get copies of that composite? Yeah, you want to we need these are, Yeah, here's a sampling. You can yeah. pass around. It's actually the fairly aesthetic, you know, as well. That's the PVC, and that's four pounds per square foot. Right. right. <laughs> How's it fastened on the ground? It's usually it's usually with some kind of you know posts, and then they they slide in the the, the yeah, panels. So there's just so. like panels. Yeah. Right now, fasten is in the ground. If you go in the ground, you just gonna bolt them onto that. I'm just wondering. The contractors over there. Any any thoughts on? Um... I've never had to build yeah. one of these. Yeah. But... It's very similar to a fence that you, yeah. yeah, a typical fence where you. Um, it, Oh, I'm just wondering about wind load and that you know, type of thing. You know? Yeah. Hi, uh, Patrick McCarty. Um, what Andrew's partner on the project. I'm also will be the builder eventually, assuming that the town welcomes us with some approvals. 
So yeah, you would drive uh, basically what looks like a steel beam, drive that into the ground for four feet, and then you slide into the channels of that. Mark, can you um, explain to me the why the change of uh, elevation during the centrifugal time? Um, so when we do our acoustic modeling analysis, we look at all the different, you know, wavelengths, how that sound is going to move. Um, and again, we're trying to protect certain homes. And if we, this particular area, we had to go up to nine feet. It was, it was doing, we needed that much more shielding on that, on that portion of the wall. So we could, we could protect, um, I think it's 22 or 26 stone end road. So we, we, we sort of fashioned it that way. So that way, you know, it, it's also taken into account the sort of the topography or the grading of, of the site as well. So we take when we do that, we want to make sure that we're we're fast we're fashioning the wall in such a way that it it provides maximum sound attenuation. Right. So, but what sound are you mitigating that requires of the nine foot? It's primarily these sound sources here, which would be the backup alarm and a truck uh, idling pick. You know, the truck idling. Is usually when they're just backing into the loading dock area. So we have that as an assumption. Um, and then we also have a, a trash compactor as well at the site. And talk to me about the six foot part of it all. So this is a six foot uh, fence. Um, and it can be designed in such a way that it can, it had, does have sound attenuation capabilities. Um, it, it, but in this case, when we did the modeling, I, as I said before, because these sound sources are back here, we're shielding quite a bit about this. This was actually part of the original design, I believe, with a six foot fence. And we, and so when we did the modeling initially, we were having some sound obviously coming through this way. And so that's when we came in and we decided that we needed to look at a sound barrier wall in that portion of the, of the site. So this was gonna be for screening purposes, I believe for yes. this particular homeowner down to the on Maple Street. Does the six foot wall actually provide any sound mitigation? If it's designed the right way and it has no gaps and it's it's tightly sealed, it does have some sound attenuation capability here. Mark, it's is important it, to note that we don't need that to act yeah. the sound wall to meet the levels of both the local bylaw and the state. That, that's correct, way. right. So this is, and we needed really for this portion of it here. We, we took in, in this into account, but we really didn't need that much for because it's off this location so far away and it's being shielded by the building itself. And, and what about the roof, uh, the rooftop yeah. sources of sound? So on the rooftop sources, they're actually lower sound levels than you know the you know trucks or backup alarms. Um, and because of the height of the building, um, there is shielding from the building itself as well. Uh, the rooftop part of it, because they're, they're sort of over in the front part of the building here, away from, from the home. Um, and so we're finding very little impact from, from those sound codes. It's actually in our report, I think we're showing that the predicted sound levels are in the low 30, just from that those sound sources alone. So the, there'll be no, on, on the roof, there won't be shielding, okay? No, no, but the <clears throat> but because of the way this is up, I uh, forget what the height of the building is, Andrew, is it? 35, 40 feet. In the back, in the yeah. front, yeah. About 40 feet. Yeah, right. So um, previously we just, not you, but yeah. we discussed um, the location of the building in being very close to the only residence is, it's very lopsided on towards the residents um, that are located on Maple Street. If we were to shift the building away from the residence, what kind of Sound mitigation to be achieved. What any particular source are you talking about, or just anything? anything, anything, anything about? The, the building is very close to the residence, and the idea would be to my, my sort of my naive response would be to if we move operations away from the residence, we would achieve some sort of mitigation. You, you know, you'd have to move it significantly to the north to get a substantial reduction in, in sound. Um, yes. You know, for every doubling of distance from a source, it's about a six decibel decrease in sound. <clears throat> so if you move the building, you know, a hundred feet, you know, you, you might get a few decibels, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, 
anything, if you're getting anything like a one to three decibel change in sound, it's an imperceptible change by uh, by people. So then would it be to if we shrunk the size of the building, what kind of sound mitigation would be? If we shrunk the building. Um, so if we shrunk the building and moved it. Um, again, um, it all really depends, you know, for, for the rooftop equipment, it probably wouldn't really do much at all. Um, for the for these other silent sources, you know, again, if you shift it away, too far away from the wall itself, then you're going to lose the benefit of the wall. So you have to, you know, we were looking at that as well. It's like, if, you know, if these sound sources are, you know, you get some benefit with distance, obviously, if you shift them away, but then you may lose the benefit of the wall itself. And then the wall uh, doesn't provide what you're really looking for, for sound attenuation. <clears throat> Brian, if I could remind everyone, it just doesn't show up on that site plan, but from the back right corner of the building all the way up to Maple Street, it's just 18 or 20 feet wide of pavement. <clears throat> That's the quote unquote emergency access only, which will be gated and signed. So the purpose was, and how this all works really well, is that there's no traffic. Car, truck, anybody, unless there's an emergency right. on this whole side of the building. On the back side, yeah. You know, that, I know it was a few months ago when we introduced the site plan, but that was after 15, 20 machinations of the plan. That was our big trust. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have 300 65 degree access on the building. Be a lot better building. <clears throat> but so we that agree that that whole side, Mike, if you just pointed out, that whole side from that back corner, <clears throat> no traffic. No cars, no trucks, not even a window over there. It's just a side of the building to protect those neighbors, which happen to be residential land abutting industrial land. And you've met with those neighbors, correct? Yes, I have multiple times. Thank you. I have a few questions. You mentioned backup alarms. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, begun to market this product yet? Which, uh, this warehouse? Me? Yes. A tiny bit. It hasn't been mass marketed. We've talked to a few select folks <clears throat> um, with zero luck. So it's not, okay. it, short answer is just a little bit. Okay. What we have um, looked at across the street, um, you keep mentioning backup alarms. Let's assume this is obviously going to be a warehouse. Uh, we have trucks coming in. I like to see um, the switch backup alarms for most of the vehicles, as opposed to the um, normal backup alarms. That's the, those are the he, what he's talking about, or what what they call white noise backup. White noise. They're they're the ones that you might hear on Amazon. Amazon. You hear the shush shush some kind of sound, mm -hmm. um, and they the benefit of those those yeah the benefit of those is that you don't have the piercing. Uh, home from, from if, home. You have, if you have Amazon and they're using all Amazon trucks versus XYZ company that might I understand. have a third party truck come in. It's, but if you, if you could just look at that viability, we can yeah. certainly talk about it. Now, okay. now that I understand it, yes. If it's going to be, you know, um, a few companies, I suppose the piercing backup sounds, it's a swish sound and it, 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 it benefits the, the, the neighbors to some degree. I also heard talk about this uh, six foot wall that you don't plan to build it to capture sound. Did you did you say that, sir, to reduce the sound? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, it's just it's a set series needed. because yeah. it's not needed. But right, like Martin pointed out. So yeah. this is just a proposed six foot privacy fence along okay. the property line. And then Mark in the yes. sound model stopped the privacy fence and said this section from here and around needs to change to the four pounds per square foot sound wall. How many feet are we talking about that does not comply with the four feet sound requirement? Not comply. Mark, it's right here. You're talking about the red. The letter yeah, that pull up that plan and show them the red line. Yeah. I think that's what yeah, the chairman's correct. You asking about how many linear feet the red yeah. line is? Yeah, the building, uh, I don't know, 220 without a scale in my hand. This the okay. line line's probably 220 feet long. Is it unrealistic to make the ask for that to be a sound wall for the better for the neighbors? 
Yeah. Well, I think what Mark's report shows yeah. is that this section here brings us into full compliance with okay. both the local bylaw and the state regulations. Okay. And, and, and as we mentioned before, there's no trucks going along that. We don't understand that. What we may want to do is uh, if everyone gets approved, uh, make a condition. We, if we find out that um, the sound is, does not do what we want to do, come back and adjust that wall uh, <laughs> if need be. Um, you mentioned something that I dealt with in, my, in the industry I was in for years. I assume you um, will be complying with the mass ivy loss. Yes, that, okay. that, that's part of the when we do our sounds when we do our sound say when it comes to idling. Um, I know that we usually we require at least we when we talk with our proponents we put signs up saying you have to meet the anti idling law requirements yep. for the trucks. Um, we would post those signs at every dock. Okay. So if you, if we'd be happy to have that as a condition of the special permit that says we have to post those signs because we would do it. That would probably be a condition. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Any condition would be a if we find out that the lots of not attenuate what we want, we can come back and look at that. That's reasonable. I think that's where it looks. Those are the only questions I have. So the, this picture is depicting a lot of trees there. Mm -hmm. How many of those trees are staying on? You that's going to be trees are staying. There's, along the property line? There's a landscape oh, plan that was provided, and we can show you that as part of it. What my concern is is that this is not looking like the typical residential vinyl fence. You know, it, it looks like we get there's steel going into it. You know, it, it just doesn't look like the typical residential fence. So I'm questioning what what. The neighbors are going to see that, um, you know. So if right now this this picture is showing them trees, so I'm sure it, it, you know, is there going to be trees on the opposite side of the fence. There's a narrow strip that will remain. It's it is narrow because we have a, a a small section of real estate to work with. But the houses, keep in mind, are set back through the woods as well. So there will be, of course, a filtered view to this wall. But it's not as if you're looking through a meadow at this wall. It's the wooded area that remains on the abutting properties. Um, are you well, taking down trees on the opposite side of the fence? Okay. We, we just most just of enough to accommodate construction of the fence. Of the fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not going to remove anything that we get that does not need to be removed. How many feet between the fence and the property line on average? I know it's, it's, I guess the, I'm concerned about the aesthetics here. Sure. So, yeah. And it, you know even the six foot wall it's not part of the sound. You know, it, it that, that just doesn't look like a typical really, residential. So, it, this is 20. Community. If you go to the website and you look at the pictures, and you've seen the pictures and yeah. you recommended these folks, we're, we're investigating this stuff. I, I feel okay. like I lied to you and said it had an aesthetic quality too, because I actually, when I look at it, and there's multiple different colors here. Yeah. And again, yeah. I've given my worth is three and butters here that I, you know, that I've met with, and to the point where. They can pick out the colors, or or if there's a more aesthetic look here. The key is four pounds per square. The density, you know, right? The density's got to be bigger. But yeah. again, when when I look, the one you, you gave me to hold is, is you got metal posts that are you know uh, aluminum, yeah. and you know it, it doesn't yeah, have to be structural. It does yeah. work. It's got to be structural. Yeah, but it's got to look. You know, and I'd also like to see a little bit better on the you know as far as the tree lines are concerned. Um, how much space is in between, mm -hmm. and you know, the color. I think, you know, what you you talk, talk, go ahead. I thought I just heard you say you're willing to meet with the neighbors, the three neighbors. Yeah, there's like seven different colors, and I you have my word, and they have my word, they can pick out the color, it's not going to okay. bother me. <clears throat> but I would say, I think what's easier to look at, Bill, yeah, if you look at figure one, right, and I have it blown up here in the <clears throat> in the report. It actually, you can see because the houses are on pretty sizable lots. You can, you, it's cut off there because they've blown up. You can't even see the, the houses. But on figure one, you can see the houses that are flushing. They're in the further back. Way for you can't even see them on that. And if you go up, there is like showing. Okay. This so if I got in the trees. window of, of the house that's depicted there, what am I going to see? What's am I gonna, the, the one, one that's sitting right there. Maple Street. What am I going to say? This is a this is the six foot privacy fence. Yeah, that's more of a typical privacy. That's your typical. Either way, what am I going to see? 
you're gonna, you're gonna see the fence. Okay. You're certainly gonna see it. Okay. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. representing that you won't see it. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. 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 Oh, asking. they're gonna see the building. Every neighbor will see the building at some point, 100 percent There's okay. a it's a tall building. It happens to be industrial land that abuts residential land. Right. I <clears throat> feel and if any of the neighbors uh that I've met with want to stand up and you know, ask questions or you know, say that we've been more than upfront with them and and are willing to work with them. And this sound study kind of speaks to exactly you know what is allowed within not special permit but site plan approval here. I would think to a man or a woman, they would say we're going, we're 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 trying to go above and beyond to help them feel like they're part of the process. So you talked to them already. In that with them. In yeah. that with them. What are some of the things you're doing to enhance the plan that would be that the neighbors brought up that you're day one? Please, and, and I'm I'm interested in hearing yeah, it because yeah, yeah. you've met with them and we love the fact you met yeah. with them. I mean but let's hear the let's first hear thing I said stuff. is you know, no one's asking me to meet with you. I'm doing it yeah. because we want to we I'm asking. Right? I'm, I'm asking. It's so it's okay. Right. I don't remember every detail of the conversation, but it started with no traffic along that side of the building. Zero. Emergency access. Okay. okay. It started with, hey, here's what is required by landscaping, right? If there's a different type of bush or tree that's in there, let's we'll do it. I'm happy to do it. It's not the end all be all, whatever gets approved as a landscaping plan. If you want. If I have 70 trees in your backyard, right, that, that, that line your backyard, and you want 40 of them over here and then leave a big gap and 30 of them over there, I'll do it, right? If you want the fence to be yellow, tan, or whatever color, if you find a better looking PVC fence that has four pounds per square foot density, I'll find it. Right. Okay. Well, I guess what I was my point yeah. was I wanted to hear some of the ideas that came forward with that you were implemented that are now part of the plan that was the part of the discussion that you had with the neighbors. That's all I was asking. Yeah. And you yeah. said there was. Yeah, and there you is. Said you did. Yeah. So I like, just in open. I just want to. No, get I it. know. I know, and it's ongoing. We're not. We're. It's not. It, we're going to continue to have meetings to try to when we build this building to try to. Even if even if it's stuff that is over and above what's a, what's required at site plan approval, okay. we're going to work with you know it's three yeah. people that that so live there. We'd love yeah. to incorporate some of the changes that the neighbors and you have come to a conclusion on and make it part of the plan. That's all all I'm asking. So maybe in a future time we could hear that. Yeah. <clears throat> but on another note, for request of one of the neighbors, and hey, you know, can you actually show us where the back of the building is? So. Mike Sermon really went out there, put a stake in the ground, back right hand corner, the stake in the ground with a big flag on the back left hand corner. Well, go out and walk the property. So now you can see in relation, you know, where it is, right? Right. Gave the grades and all that. So I, you know, it's it's a work in progress, but it's been a, a collective effort. Correct. Yeah, but no actual changes have been incorporated into the plan as a result of the conversation. So this is the initial plan that was submitted, and we put our best foot forward, if I could, when we first submitted this plan. We showed screening fencing. Yep. You see that there's evergreen plantings where we have the, the, the room, if you will, to plant them. Um, we made sure that lighting was not on that southern side of the building. So we thought we thought about this quite a bit before we even submitted the plans. So you've since met with the neighbors. The wall has come out of this um, sound study, of course. You've already um, disclosed that you're going to meet with the neighbors, and, and if they want a different color, a different style, he's we perfectly love open to that. Um, this has turned into a confrontation. What I was trying to do is get. No, I get. I was trying to get it all. We well, were, it's not. He's no, the, the tone. So my, what my, I was my, trying to do my, is, you guys said that you're working with the neighbors. There's a plan that you know. There's things that are going to go into the plan. We just wanted to hear it. That's, so we're still in a future time, love to hear it. But it sounds like these plans are the ones that were previous ones, the start out ones. So in a future meeting, let's hear the things that you guys have done to the plan by you know with input and talking to the neighbors to make things better. That's and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.
for, uh, for the sake of time, I'll just I'll make this quick. A concern of mine um, would be noise coming from within the building when the doors are open. You could have, you know, with the occasional truck backing in, that you know it could be one every couple of hours, but you could have pallet jobs, forklifts running all day. So a concern of mine would be the backup alarms on those pieces of equipment. Were those considered um, with the doors open? No, we didn't because normally, um, and I've worked with other developers on warehouse projects, usually a condition that I've seen, I'm not going to necessarily speak for Andrew, but so usually the condition is that doors are closed at all times. You will probably have yeah, so something to that effect. So uh, usually there's a, you know, there's usually a, a number of good neighbor things that can be done to make sure that, you know, noise and, uh, can be minimized from, from the inside of the building. Another example would be we don't want work to be done on the trucks in the parking lot. If that can be done off site, you know, changing yeah. tires and those types of things. Right. I think they're fairly common sense. Right, right, right. To make good neighbors, I think the neighbors may bring down. Yeah. Amy, what's the next step? Um, I think what we could do is um, allow the applicant to talk to tech review and to look at the review and go back and forth with them directly and then come back to the board at a, another hearing. Correct. Um, if that well, works. We to the development plan or the scenic. You could do both and work with our consultant. Um, so we would continue. Okay, I, I just just for clarification. Um, so this particular aspect of the project is not currently being peer reviewed. The scenic road is not correct. No, I just that's want to make correct. Sure I that's correct. That. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one will continue, but we're also going to run parallel Perfect. the development plan, and then within that time, we could continue both to either February eighth, and in the interim, we could have the applicant meet with our consultant to work out some of the peer review comments and then come back. What uh what do we have on the 25th? Um we have on the 22nd WS Maple and then 175 North Street. Okay. I think uh do we have enough time on the eighth. <laughs> we will have enough is time on the eighth if that's good. Is that giving you enough time? Yeah, we we met with our traffic engineer. He okay. he had a conflict. He wasn't able to okay. come tonight. Like, almost all the comments from peer review were asking for more things on the traffic. Sure. People, so we could two we say yes to. We just so don't you get the back and forth right. peer reviewers. You'll yep. we'll get him in touch with your yes. peer review. Yes, yes. That'd be great. That's great. And that's for <laughs> He he seemed to think that. In, in his response to us and our meeting with him on the traffic study stuff, and it would be a lot easier if he was on the phone with right Gary exactly. for half an hour. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And then I think after that, um, you could probably meet with the neighbors or in the interim and bring, you know, bring I will meet with all the neighbors before February. Yeah. yeah. Well, or, you know, within a certain time frame yeah. based on what we decide. Uh, is a preference and then I think any comments from the public works or the senior? Uh, anyone here? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Peter Gabriel, Stone Age Road. Dennis, you asked a question and didn't get answered. We currently have a fence issue, a Maple Street wind load. What's the wind load of this fence? We have fencing being knocked down by wind already. Right? Yeah. And we're putting up another PVC fence. Yes, CVS is gone down south. south. Yeah, and you asked the question, it wasn't answered. Yeah. Kind of like to have the answer. Well, let, let me explain what's happening. He's referring to um, the solar panel, yes, 186 Maple Street, not far, that far from where you are. Mm -hmm. That has had significant damage to their um, vinyl factory over the past few years. And we've asked them to come in here and address that. Uh, it seems to be a lack of, I'm not a person on knowledge of wind meteorology but it seems to be maybe a wind tunnel along parts of uh the street is that fair yes fair to say yeah. yeah and you know how that would impact the wind load on the fence to remain sturdy the question was asked i think he partially answered on how to put it in but we didn't even find out about stability so i might i to make sure that can stand up to a, a certain wind load okay. i think that i suspect the manufacturer may tell you what the wind load is for that. And that's one reason why I was thinking down the road, you may want to make the other fencing, face the neighbors, 
more solid. So it, it doesn't get blown over. Sure. I didn't want to use specifically say that, but the more solid the four inch dense fence is going to be more substantial than a standard quote unquote. You know, vinyl property matter. That's on me. I'm going to get you and I will talk together. That's your question. Thank you. We'll be able to bring some in. Perfect. Okay. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Thanks, sir. Absolutely. Any other questions? Um, we have one person in the back here, and then we'll go there. Thank you, Stone Edge. Your name, sir? Your name's Robert. How are you, sir? Okay, the elevation of this building in the back. The building's about 35, 40 feet tall. Oh, I was told 40 feet. Okay, so when they bring it out on the road level <clears> from <throat> Maple Street, how high is it going to be in the back? It's going to be at least 10 to 15 feet taller than that. No. So, um, Where are they going to put the snow? The snow goes right into my property. <laughs> and why don't they turn the building the other way to the north so those garages are on the other side? All right, I think we discussed that at one time. Yes. Earlier. So, uh, I'll, Bob, I'll try to go in order. Yep. Shape, I'll try to go in order. The back right corner of the building <clears throat> was staked out, which Bob and I looked at today, this morning, is roughly at the elevation within a foot, correct me if I'm wrong, of where it'll be when the building's built. Existing grade. Right? Existing grade. Behind that, with loading faces from the back of the building, you know, the four foot tailboard loading doors. The parking lot starts at four feet below that. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask my builder and partner. Correct me if I'm wrong. The front of the building is 40 feet tall, and it's all in the elevations and the submissions. Mm -hmm. And the pitch of the roof goes from front to back. So mm -hmm. based on roof drains and drains and all that, I believe roughly from the front of the building. To the rear of the building, after correct me if I'm wrong, there's about a seven foot drop. Correct. But the part of the building, so the path goes that way. The back of the building will be typically lower. It's lower from front. Yes, it's just one pitch of the roof from front to back, the way we designed it that way. So the rear of the building will be roughly, correct me if I'm wrong, 33 feet from floor height. And that floor height, the back right hand corner of the building, which is at the current grade today, is four feet above the pavement because it's four foot tailboard loading in the back. Is that was that what we were? Is that does that answer? You never that? really gave me elevation of what it's going to be. Yes. So if I may suggest, we had our last meeting. We had one of the applicants come in with drawings that represented that. And I'm sure Amy can show you what you you just described a lot of math there. Mm -hmm. And what we did with our last applicant was to yeah. come in and actually have a drawing sure. that showed that. And maybe that elevation. We have that. Yeah. With the building, not with it, it in, in like the area. In the air. With the area around it. Yeah, with, versus the area around it. Are you talking about a perspective view? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And I see. Amy can, can provide mm -hmm. what the exactly. I'm thinking of something we got last last meeting. Another, okay, another, another applicant. Yeah. If that will this is a sample. If that will help, we can we would generate that. Exactly. For you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you can get that done by the end, mm -hmm. if not in a future meeting. So what we want to do is impose the building on the land. What it would look like in, if and when it's built. So this gentleman has an idea of what he's looking at. Sure. And and then the uh, other question was um, where is it, where are you going to store the snow? We, we do show snow storage area on the site. site. Yeah. And How nothing will be along the southern the side. Line? So the closest yeah. snow storage area we're showing is basically at the setback line. And the setback is not everybody can see that what you're looking at. Is are those in those drawings right there? Yeah. We'll have to yeah. put the page. If you go to C5, Patrick. Thank you. So you may want to come up and look at this document. You don't understand it. You can try to understand by look at things. Okay. I can point it right out on the plan. Sure. Yeah. So we have several areas. We have an area here. We have another area here. And then we have an area along the edge of the parking lot here. 
and then another uh, wall along the front. And what did so? Where is your house? Do you mind me asking? Stearns is here, it's right down there. Okay. It's about 35 feet from the, the driveway where they push the stop. Okay, right. So, if is I may, Mr. Carroll, turn this so he can see. Certainly, Mr. Stearns, you're here. This is your property here, right. So we're proposing that's where the snow could be dumped right there. One area here, and this drains down this way towards the wetland, not right. towards you. Can I um what you may see is a condition. Um how are you gonna what how do you plan to treat your parking lot during the winter? <laughs> um if we look at something that is um, certainly not sand, but um, something that's friendly to the environment, like yeah, you know, maybe you know, like caliper or something. Um, I, I don't even know if they still use caliper because I've been out there. Yeah, so so uh, uh, I, I guess the the third hat I wear is I'm also a professional engineer. You know, I I have my own engineering business, and I've actually served as an expert witness in several slip and fall cases. Yeah. So agreeing to conditions like that is kind of a slippery slope, no pun intended, uh, because you have to treat the parking lot properly so that there's no ice for safety of the people using the building and also visitors in the building. So uh, I'm certainly happy to look into a product like that, but I would be cautious to agree to a condition that would limit our ability to keep it safe. Okay. I'm not asking you to do that. From a risk management standpoint, there are products now that pre-treat and do the same thing, then able you to get it down to bare pavement, either the fill blower or a plow or a shovel so that you create an environment that greatly enhances your chance for reducing slip and fall. Mm -hmm. And it's helping the environment. As you mentioned, there's some wetlands back there. Right. And we need to be cognizant of those. So that's why I stay away from sand <clears throat> and potentially the sand salt mix. Yeah. On all our on all our other properties, we don't use sand or sand salt mix. It's okay. all straight salt. Okay. Yes, sir. Steve Kohler, twenty six Stonehead Road. I live uh, to the south of the Stearns. We, we share a neighboring plot line. Um, do you folks have C six available? I don't. Cheek C6 you're referring to? Yes. Does it have the lines on it? I'm going to make a statement in the end, but I'm going to try and answer this the same question. At our property line, the elevation is between 222 and 224. From what I can see, the parking lot is 10 feet above that, and then the building goes up from there. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Exist the, the proposed grade here at the back of the building is 232. I'm sorry, I've got standing in the way as I'm talking. So this is 232, 233 at the building, then steps up four feet to the finished floor. The existing grade at our 232 is about 229 to 228, depending on because our contour is exactly. And then the slope drops about 10 feet over how far? Maybe it drops 10 feet over 10 feet, somewhere about that window. Yeah, there's one isolated area around the corner where there's you'll see the off grading there, Patrick. Here, yeah. yeah. So Mr. Stern's house will be around 224. The building parking lot will be 10 feet above that. The building roof another 40 feet above that. Is that correct? Uh, the only thing that's not correct is the the 40 foot height. It's actually lower than that in the back. Yeah, it's probably 30 feet. Yeah, about yeah. 33 feet. It slopes from, front slopes from the front of the building to the back. All right. So hopefully that answers. Um, there's a comment. Mr. Satcher and I have had uh, several conversations. We're a pleasant gentleman. He, he's um, answered all the questions. Obviously, uh, for us, we'd like to not see the building. I understand. Um, but there's a reality that uh, I don't own the land. It's his. 
he's entitled to do what he wants with it within reason. For me personally, and I think my wife, um, our big issue is the noise. Uh, our patio is on the back of the house. Um, the corner of my lot is 95 feet to the edge of the parking lot. And the Stearns property line is nine and a half feet from the fence. Uh, as I measured it today. Okay. When we sit in the back, we can hear the door alarm at Camp Bow Wow. Um, when, in the shoulder months, when the windows are open, I can hear the backup alarms at Corellic. Okay. As, as reference points. Yeah, when I'm lying in bed at night and, okay. and, and it's quiet, I can hear those backups. So for me, uh, I get that we're going to see some of the building fair enough. Um, you know, Andrew certainly uh, claims to, to make it as appealing as, as he can within his financial limits there, but uh, the noise would be the upsetting thing. We're okay. sitting in the back on a, on a Sunday and listening to a, a truck that showed up for a delivery eight hours early and it's idling all Sunday afternoon. Were you going to try to put conditions in there? Um, Question on that: What's the uh, the fail safe? Or what's the? How do you support um, enforce that? It'll be uh, written in the conditions, and I believe um, it can be enforced through the building department. But I, you know, we we have uh, we don't indicate uh, lines yet per se, but uh, it's something we can explore. But um, hopefully we can try to address that as best we can. And then if not, we can meet with the uh, developer owner and get more specific if we have to. And maybe put some wording in there. Um, what the you know, penalties or damages could be up to and included. But we, we are trying, you heard me talk about the switch alarms. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, we'll look at, um, Hopefully Sunday we may not be, have a lot of deliveries. But again, you don't know who your tenant is. Uh, but that's something we can look at. Um, we're looking at the anti-highway law. So that would reduce the sound. Uh, I understand we cannot get every vehicle down the switch along, but you know, we can try to get the common vehicles to come there to do that. I'll be very honest, I don't think we can get UPS. I would love to, or Amazon, to use for alarms. I think that's unrealistic, but we're gonna try, we will try to look in that and put that in condition. Thank you. Yeah. Um, mitigate the sound as best we can with the tools that we have at our disposal. Appreciate it. Did that you. answer your question? Yeah. Jim? Yes, sir. That'd be very quick. Uh, actually, I won't, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, and I appreciate what you guys do with our speech. We know how we feel about it. Um, putting conditions in doesn't always work. When we sat and listened to the new tenant for the Campanelli building, one of the conditions was 150 trucks. Well, that's a joke. Okay. It's, it, Amazon does 150 trucks an hour, but the condition of that building was 150 trucks, so it's just painted. I have to go back and look at that. I, read, I just read it. Okay. So, um, there is another fence that's not being talked about that I like the what's going to be made of on the northern side of the building and not Maple Street. I believe the plan called for the fence right by the settlement. Correct. I'd like to know what yeah. that's going to be. And to add, go back to Mr. Stern's comment, if we turn the building so the trucks were on the north side, we don't want to make noise. Mm -hmm. But my gut feeling is. Wetlands is not allowing that. So we're stuffing this in on a wet piece of property and hurt the neighbors. I, I think you looked at all sorts of options for the building. We did. We did it. It's, it's not only that, it's a topography as well. Is that, that a fair assessment? Absolutely. Okay. It's, 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 no, I'm sorry. I just thought it was false. I'm right? sorry. sorry but, um, to, to so you, you, no, you're, you're good, Bill. The noise we hear is about the same as here. I get gorilla farms all night. Still hit Amazon all night. The horns beeping every time they come and go. We set aside and listen to this all the time. Now we're at another warehouse mm -hmm. that I'm still going to hear too. Mm -hmm. This is not bad. Okay. 
the, the noise is getting out of control in this area. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to point out the other fencing that he was asking sure. about? So he is correct. We are proposing a six foot stockade fence along. Is that around the storage area? We have it here along the street and then along the uh, side where we have the outdoor storage area. Okay. And then it changes the chain link fence for just six feet around the pension basin. What I like to do is talk a little bit more at the next meeting about what's to be in the storage area and how high that fence will be. I think too for the fencing, it seems to be a yeah, because I see pre existing issues with town, so they totally get it. And, and that's on me. I'm gonna we're gonna do more homework on the fencing, okay? Right, and we'll bring pictures and yep. we'll get descriptions as to how they're affixed to the ground, yep. and how sturdy they are against wind. Because we don't want to put up a fence and have to go repair it, okay, know, six months later and have people die down Maple Street and say this guy's fence is down for the third right. time in a year. We will get much more detail, a description on what the fences look like and how they're built into the ground. That, that's fair. But what I would recommend you do, and uh, you can still think it's there because we're in the middle of winter, just drive down on Maple Street, going from Mechanic North, look at 186, and look what that fence is up to. And we had them in here, and they have committed. You know, addressing this and so on. But yeah, um, it, it didn't work and we're trying to catch up. So that gives you an example of something that didn't. That we don't want to happen. Understand. Okay. Yep. This is a first for a, a sound barrier wall. So we will get to the top of the learning curve on this. Okay. And all that before the end of February. Okay, maybe if it takes longer, that's fine. No, we're gonna get we, we don't want to rush through this, but we want to address as many neighbors' concerns as we can. Well, see if there's anybody in the zone. Anyone in the Zoom has any questions? Yes, I do. Christine? Yes. Um and, and I don't I'm sorry. The floor is yours. Thank you. You're um, welcome. My question just has to do with, and, and maybe it's not going to be addressed here, is just another warehouse with more 18-wheeler trucks running 24-7, seven days a week, as I've heard, through the town of Bellingham. I don't, I don't understand how it's expected that our roads are going to continue to be able to flow for us residents who need to go places with all, all of these trucks. I mean, that other warehouse that's on the corner of 140 hasn't even started to impact our traffic, which in my seven years here has gotten horrendous. Just trying to get two miles to 495, some days takes me 15 minutes. And now, we have another we have another warehouse on the docket that is trying to come into the town. So there's a lot of talk and I my heart goes out to the people who are impacted visually by these warehouses, but on the town as a whole, how is the traffic going to be fit into this discussion? Okay. Well, let me address the first one. And the second part is rather um, complex to answer, but I'm not going to shy away from answering it. You don't plan to have 18 wheelers at first. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm your trucks, please, sir. Yeah, they'll be they'll be they'll be trucks to trucks. Yes. How many is that you We <clears throat> so again on the peer review, most of it was. Asking different additional information on the traffic study. Yeah. The traffic engineer isn't here, but we've agreed to have that okay. get together. And so the, the total truck count, trips per day count is roughly 130, which versus, and he can explain all this, you know, on the aid, but 100% um, we would expect at that building that a tenant or tenants would be using 55 okay. trucks. So probably we, yeah, we will look at that as we go forward with our um, traffic count and our, our expert will pile in. In regards to um, the other issue you raised, 
I'll be very honest with you, it is not a planning board issue. The concern you have, and a lot of people in town have, is the zoning intent. Uh, this board has proposed zoning that has been voted down to reduce the number of industrial properties throughout town that has been defeated. Um, this board looks at, and Brian, you can articulate better. It's a, usually a build right front. I, do, I, I think what, what Bill's saying is that we hear you and we completely sympathize with your point of view and we agree with you. And in fact, we've made efforts to rezone. And I think this particular parcel was part of an effort that recently failed at town meeting. The people expressed their concerns about warehouses being constructed. Um, and we tried to be proactive and change the zoning. And unfortunately, a lot of good ideas go to town meeting and die uh, for a number of reasons. But uh, we, we're we as a planning board, we're stuck with what tools are left to us to use. And we're stuck with the zoning. And this is a by right use. For some reason, our forefathers thought it was a great idea to put a zoning line between industrial and residential. It's a horrible idea. It's a horrible idea. And, but we're stuck with it. And as a board with limited capacities, particularly when this isn't a special permit, because when, when it is a special permit, and you, you might not know what that means, but under a special permit, the board has a lot more latitude to condition and, and make changes. This isn't a special permit. So we're, we're, we're stuck kind of in, in the box that we have and we can push and pull. And some of the things that I think that we're gonna talk about later is hours of operation. And if, if we can't get mitigation some other way, we're going to look to curtail hours of operation for, for this business because it, it is right next to <clears throat> residential homes. So that's something the applicant should think about is, you know, the building's too close to the neighbors. It's too mm -hmm. close, it's too loud for, for, I know from past experience that if walls are being constructed, walls are very expensive, there's a significant problem. And I'm surprised to hear that we're not pure in this because I, I do think it absolutely, particularly noise, um, that needs to be pure to have, have our own expert. We'll go for it. We can do, we, we can do that also. That's up to the board if they want to review the wall. Okay. And so we can. But that's a long-winded saying. We 100 percent, 100 percent agree with you. Um, but we we're, we're doing the best we can with with the laws and the zoning that we have. We've tried to do rezone, and we've been told by residents in town that it's not our job to limit what landowners can do with their properties, but a, a specifically zoned industrial, and that's why it was voted in. And we try to you know, do that several times in town. So I don't have the answer you want, but we, we have tried to do it. Um, our zoning is open. And you know, that's something I think we, you know, we, we need to look at you know, as a town. Um, and as a board. But you know, it's, we are stuck with what we have on the zoning bylaws. So what I'd like to do, unless there's anyone else um, I like to. Next meeting will be the eighth. But do we that need a motion? Works. Before we do that, I had a great I idea about saying here we talk discussing both for the first time. We're going to do that. Defense? The for, for, the, for, the, for the sound, yeah. I, I would be. Close the senior I would be amenable to going along with that if the rest of the board thought that was a good idea. But it sounded like you were surprised we were do, we weren't doing a. Sound yet? I, I assume we're going to go into. Okay, we haven't discussed. It. Okay. So, would you like to do that? Have a sound peer review? I would think so. Okay, if that's what the board wants. Yeah. Okay. We'll try to get that done as quickly as we can. Sound review, and we need to do a continuation for the scenic road public hearing. Yes. And we're going to continue that till February eighth. So, is there a motion? February. Second. Second, Nick. All in favor? Ten side. at seven o'clock. Brian, I. The meeting will start. Yeah, start at seven. Bill, I. <clears throat> Bill, I. Nick, I. What I'd like to do, I don't know what we've done. Excuse me, we also need a 
um, continuation for the regular hearing for 306 Maple Street. That's because we have enough time to accomplish the sound pay review within two weeks. I don't believe so, but I think there's still enough that you guys could do in the interim at that. It's, yeah, there's certainly things we can do. And I would suggest that we try to do that. Right. And we can always we try. shift gears when you want one more. So what I do is start that process, mm -hmm. bring you the circle, circle back uh, on the A, see where we are, and then address where we get back mm -hmm. from our engineer to see what we can do. And then bring you back as soon as we can. So we need a motion to continue. I do need to change that. Decision deadline. Um, we can move that out. We have moved that. Right. We're all set with that. So I would need a motion to continue the uh, public hearing uh, for 306 Maple Street due on February 8th. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? And that's at 7 o'clock. The meeting will start at 7. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the agenda will be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We have a continued meeting going on. <laughs> Is there anyone outside that needs to come in? I'm sorry. Anyway, use your microphone. Are these microphones? Yeah. Because oh, we can't hear you. Oh, we'll try to. All right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, we can't hear you. Ma'am, I think they're for the internet. So I think they pick up the internet. Oh, they, they don't come over the. Oh. If you want to come in and sit down, we have a couple of seats around. They may not be together. <laughs> Uh, 
I like to uh, continue with our agenda. We have a public hearing on Prospect Hill Village. Nick, can you read the notice, please? Absolutely. Prospect Hill Village, the applicant and owner, Wall Street Development Corp. A, proposes to construct 156 two bedroom townhouses in 52 buildings with three townhome dwellings in each building, as well as associated improvements. The primary and secondary access to the project will be off Prospect Street in Franklin, the development. The property is located off Prospect Street, approximately 72 acres of land, shown on Assessor's Map 65, Lot 20 and 22, Assessor's Map 69, Lot 87, Zoned Agriculture. The plans were prepared by GLM Engineering Consultants, Inc. at 19 Exchange Street, Holliston, Massachusetts, 01746, Franklin, Massachusetts, 02038. Thank you. Before I call the applicant, we have a rather robust audience here this evening. Um, what I'm going to ask, when it comes time for public input, I know you all have a lot of questions to ask. If you could um, not ask the same question more than two times, <laughs> it'd be greatly appreciated. I, I know it may be hard to do. You know, I've, in the past, I've asked for free, but if we could you know, keep it down, um, you know, if you want to get a derivative of the question, but it's the same, just try to be cognizant of that. I would encourage you to um, rotate who asked the questions so we get different people's viewpoints. I assume right now you may not have one person <coughs> to speak on behalf of all of you, but down the road, if you designate one or two people to speak on your behalf, we'll make these uh, meetings go quicker down the road. Amy, um, <coughs> For the benefit of the audience, can you give us an overview of why we're here tonight? Or do you, or do you want the applicant? I think the applicant has the history. They, they can explain that through their okay. presentation. Do you let my, well, you introduce yourself and your team. Sure. Luke Petrosi for Wall Street Development Corp. I'm the president of Wall Street Development Corp. I have with me tonight uh, Rob Truex from GLM Engineering and Jeff Germazian. From uh, one of our consultants. And um, just to give you a quick overview, as the board probably knows, that you know, we purchased this property back in uh, 2021. And uh, we have engineered the property, but and we were proceeding with uh, our evaluation. The town was adopting a new uh, amendment to the zoning bylaws that required us to file a subdivision plan to freeze that zoning in place, which gave us the opportunity to do this type development. We completed the subdivision hearing process sometime uh, middle of last year. Um, the subdivision was approved both by Bellingham and the town of Franklin. That plan is now has been recorded. It freezes the zoning for eight years, I believe. And uh, we subsequently, you know, if we, our goal has always been to do a multifamily type townhouse development on this property. Um, we've appeared on a few occasions with the departments during uh, interdepartmental meetings on several occasions. And this plan now is uh, the result of those conversations. Um, I know that there's been a lot of uh, social media out there with information that is completely um, not accurate. So I'd like uh, tonight to begin the process of uh, introducing the project, um, hearing the comments of the neighbors and um, the town departments, and um, proceeding to hopefully develop a, pro a project that or development that everybody will be uh, happy with. So with that, I just simply turn it over to Rob Tour. I like to summarize for a moment. Yes. So in summary, what this gentleman has done is purchased land in Bellingham. We um, made a decision as a town to eliminate townhomes. 
he requested a subdivision in accordance to reserve his right to build townhomes here. I could be wrong, but I think we met with you almost over two years, like 18 months, with the indication that you had the ability to build 14 homes. In the process, you had litigation um, concerning the town of Franklin for access to this property. Is that a fair assessment? That's correct. And then some concerns with uh, our conservation board. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. Okay. Then this board, although we anticipated that these 14 houses would not be built, we held you to the same criteria we would hold any other builder to in approving the, sub the development, correct? Yes. So that brings us to tonight, where he's already reserved his right to put townhomes in here. And this is the first official presentation to the planning board and to the general public, other than he may have had a presentation to various departments. I would ask that you allow him to make his presentation. Normally, uh, when he is done with his presentation as a board, we ask questions. I'm not going to do that this evening. I would like to hear from the public first once they make their presentation so we can get your input. I assume a lot of the questions that you may raise will be questions that we would have asked anyway. But there are a lot of you here. There are people on um, zooming in. It's important that we hear from you. So to facilitate that process, we're going to ask you to ask the questions beforehand. It is not beyond the realm of possibility that we may ask the applicant to meet with the neighbors at some point in time in the near future to develop proactive conversations on what can happen. This is going to be a long process. Tonight is the first step in that process. Um, it's going to be long. I, I can remember um, being back in college and I thought things were monumental. And someone told me, well, when you try to eat an elephant, you can't eat an elephant in one meal. But if you take small bites, you lick the elephant over time. When you get through this process over time, with the coordination of everyone here in the room. So, sir? Lo, if you want to give us your presentation. Yes. Or okay. yours. We have to introduce Rob Truax from GLM Engineering, and he can give you a quick overview of the project. And he can certainly be interested in hearing from the uh, comments from the neighbors and the brothers. Okay. Thank you. For the record, Rob Truax, GLM Engineering Consultants. You agree? Do you mind standing? Not at all. Do you need an extra hand? Can you get a little loud? Yeah, you get a microphone? It doesn't work if we can't hear you. They don't have the big on the Yeah. That's not going to be the sound. You just got to speak up. Oh, okay. I can speak loud. Thank you. Okay. So this is the site located off Prospect Street and Lake Street, and it also abuts uh, Lakeview Ave down at the rear next to the farm. So this is the area that's colored up is the entire site that we're proposing. It's a 72 acre site, and that's 72 acres in the town of Bellingham. There is a small amount of land that's in the town of Franklin. There are some houses that were taken out of this property, as you probably know, along Prospect Street. You're familiar with seeing a few new homes go up along Prospect Street that were taken out of the overall parcel of the land. Those houses are actually in the town of Franklin. They're not in the town of Bellingham. So with the 72 acres, and if you do the calculation based on the zoning bylaw, this allows him 156 units in three unit buildings. So we're doing, what is it, 52 buildings, all the three units in each building. So there's a total of 72 acres of land, about 30 acres of that is used for the development. The other 40 will remain at its natural state, which is 
some wetlands, some wooded areas, et cetera. If you look up on the board, the dark greens are the areas that will be are undeveloped. There's a big parcel of land going out towards Lake Street that we're not proposing any units or development. And then there's a central area down here that provides a pretty sizable buffer from the, the bigger part of the development from Prospect Street. The project access will be from Prospect Street primarily. There'll be two access points on Prospect Street through the town of Franklin. This is the main access in the central area here. And what we're proposing is a road that would come in. This would be a double barrel roadway coming in. That's the main access. It would be a divided road with an island down the middle. And then that's going to come into a roundabout. This is the secondary access of Prospect, which is, if you know the area, this is, uh, just to give you an idea, this is where the old landfill is. I think everyone knows that. And now there's the solar fields are up there. Give you an idea what that is. And then actually this land over here is owned by the town of Bellingham. So we have an access point down here. This is our second access that comes in, loops around, which will connect to this access. So when you come in, this is about a thousand feet till you get to the intersection. And then we come off here with a cul-de-sac, which is another six or seven hundred feet. And then we have a loop road within the system, which is about 2,600 feet of roadway starting here and looping around up to this cul de sac. This last piece of road that comes out here is about 1,600 feet. And then we have an emergency access road that goes down to Lakeview Ave that's about 800 feet. And again, I, I want to emphasize this road at the end. It's not really designed to be a real street up into Lakeview Ave. It's, we're designing it as emergency access only. And we haven't proposed anything more than calling it that. We're not, at this time, we haven't talked about gating it or anything for that sense. So the idea of the site, there's, a, there's an existing water line that comes from Lakeview Ave, comes up through the site and goes in through the old landfill and heads out. That's going to be our connection to the water system in the town of Bellingham. We'll connect into that. We're going to loop that through the project site and service all the homes. As far as the sewer goes, we are proposing to tie into the sewer pump station that's on Cross Street. Um, this plan does not show the development of that at this point in time. We're in the process of doing that design for the sewer connection. There will be a pump station within the site, just so you know. And if you all are familiar with the area, coming down from here is Blackmont Street. And then it turns into this old railroad bed. So that's the old railroad bed that goes all the way through the old site. If you're mm -hmm. all familiar when you walk that area. We're going to, Mr. Petrosi owns this railroad bed all the way up to Blackmont Street. And we're going to pump from the site up through the railroad bed. And when we hit Blackmont in the area of about Lakeview Ave, we'll discharge into a gravity system and we'll build a gravity system that will take it down the street and tie into the pump station on Cross Street. As far as the, um, you know, this is, this has to obviously go through Conservation Commission. We do have some wetlands centrally located in here. There will be wetlands over here. We have a river that comes through the site here. We have a river that comes through the site here. We are crossing the wetlands in the middle here. That's, um, with, if you've been out there, there's an existing crossing there now. If back in the day, that's sort of with the roadway in and out of the site when they were doing gravel removal for the Barney Brothers operation. We um, we have an extensive drainage system throughout the site. We are collecting all the runoff from the streets, the roofs, et cetera, all the impervious surfaces. We're constructing five drainage basins that will mitigate the runoff, recharge the water back into the ground and discharge it back towards the wetlands and the area around. So we have a basin here, we have basins here, we have them all around the site, we have them all at the low points. So it's collecting all the water through catch basins and manholes to bring it all to these drainage basins. We're mitigating the flow. We, can, we have good soils on the site, as you know, this was an old gravel operation. So there's all sands and gravels out there. So we have good soils to provide infiltration back into the ground with the groundwaters. So we can do that in a, in a good manner. Um, on this road here, 
Just so the commission board can see it. We are proposing a recreation building, community building here with some outdoor recreation area. That's right near this cul-de-sac. There is some parking right there in front. As you can see. Um, we did put a roundabout in, and it's really just a traffic timing device as you come into the site. And for aesthetics purposes as well, we have the you know the island as you come in the main road. Each side is approximately 16 feet of pavement, and that would be a one-way rotary, and that's really a an oversized rotary, and that's really just a cop, uh, traffic timing device to put this to play. Um, so that that's pretty much an overview. Um, like I said, there's a hundred, there's 52 buildings, there's 156 units. The 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 gist of the most of the units are in this general area here. <clears throat> we have a few coming in on this access road. Um, if we're going to build it, we might have to put some units over there, and then we do have units along this cul-de-sac behind the homes that are along Prospect Street. I think with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to keep that short because I know we do. And look at the units of the district that's the question, I guess. Hello, anyone else for your team? Uh, no one will wait to reserve the traffic guys to subsequent meeting, okay. but we'll have a traffic consultant. Okay. As I said earlier, uh, we usually ask questions. <clears throat> we want to hear from the public. So um, just raise your hand and we'll call on you. Again, try, not, try to limit the same questions once or twice and try to rotate the last question. Yes, sir, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Swanabaka, 69, if you have any. So did I hear correctly that the water main for this development is going to be the same water main that's running down Lakeview Avenue currently? Correct. Why not run the water main along the along the line with the sewer? Um, the, 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 the water main on Lakeview Avenue is quite challenged at this point already. I mean, so we go look into and discuss it with the DPW, mm -hmm. but our first initial was we were coming off the main that's on the property. Mr. Chairman, I'd love to I'd really like us to take a look at that as you make your turn. Sure. Thank you. Can you elaborate on what the challenge part of it is? Well, it's quite old. And as they've had um as they've had construction equipment coming down to this area previously, they've collapsed in certain areas, the water main. One one of one of them resulted in a flood in front of my house. And so to think that they're going to take that water main and then feed all these other the entire development from that already compromised water main just seems a stretch. Yeah, but I will say that it was our understanding that the water main was just recently installed. We will, we will get a report from our DPW. Yeah. And address that. Yeah. We'll talk to them. Yeah. Next person. Yep. Over here, I need the clock, sir. Yeah, John Holman, uh, Victor Street in Bellingham. Um, it's an interesting proposal. I'd like to get clarification from the town and the developer, please. It's our understanding this is a special permit application. Um, and as such, it's it's requesting that there's a continuation uh, uh, of an approval of a prior zoning regulation that is now outdated for townhomes. Is there anything that would keep a developer from building a 30-story residential tower? Is that multifamily? Or would that constitute a carbon island from the original 24 houses? Yes, yeah, so I've, I've noticed a little bit of confusion on um, social media about that. So there is, there is a new state law that was passed several years ago that, that will allow for increased density construction that doesn't that bellingham has the entire two year of 2024 to figure out where that goes and how that's going to work in our town this project is not uh, uh under that state right. law there's the the confusing part of it all is the town actually changed the bylaws to not allow this kind of development to be constructed in this particular area but Somebody that owns a piece of property um, 
that has a changed zoning bylaws can submit an application to construct something to preserve their right to construct under the old bylaws. So uh, Mr. Petruzzi submitted an application to construct, I think it was 13 single family homes, two acre lots, which we vetted over two years and, and ultimately approved because it was a uh, by right use. So th that's a little bit confusing. Now he's coming back to us and said, we're not gonna build that other one. We're gonna build this one under the old zoning regulations. And then that's completely <laughs> permissible because he preserved his rights under the oh. Under the old zone, but it has nothing to do with the new state law of uh, density. And that's helpful background. The question was not about the proposed MBTA transit oriented development. We're not a half a mile from the MBTA, it's null. Uh, the original proposal was 13 homes. A second proposal, if I don't mistake, was approximately 24 or 26 homes that was applied to the town. Uh, there's a concept called cardinal change, and I represented this on the big dig, and I submit to the town that is a cardinal change. It's a different project to build 152 townhouses on the bulk of 72 acres to the west of the wetlands. It is not a continuation of the same project concept of building 13 or 24 homes on the east side of the drainage by Lake Street. I'll submit a letter to the town. I would urge the town to put this in the public record and consider the concept that <clears throat> the, the concept of continuing uh, review of this project as a continuation of a former submittal may not be valid. But, but That's we're a not. decision yeah. not for me to make. I don't know who it is to make, but I want to put the concept out there. This is a completely different project. It Absolutely. is not. Minor, minor expansion. I'll leave it at that. It, it, but but it's not. So we're happy to have legal counsel look at it, but it's not a continuation of the prior proposal. It's a brand new proposal. So that that unfortunately, I wish you know maybe that was something that we could look at, but uh, it's not a continuation of a prior proposal. He took advantage. I hate to use the word. There were opportunities presented to him to reserve his right by applying to build 13 or 14 days on this property and be thoroughly vetted. We vetted that proposal because it preserved his right to come back and ask for the townhomes because we were changing his property for what he could build. We vetted those homes in the anticipation that if he changed his mind, we could build them. I, I mentioned earlier it was 13 months. Honestly, it might have been close to, as Brian said, two years. Um, we put strict requirements in the event he decided to change, and it was not viable where he changed his mind on the town hall. Simply what he did by proposing that development was to reserve his right mm -hmm. to go back and build what he could have done before we changed our bylaw outlining out prohibiting townhouse yes sir do i read the town bylaw correctly that it's a voluntary process in that the town is not necessarily uh forced into approving something that you you have the reservation of rights to uh, approve or disapprove a project under a special permit. We, we certainly do have the right to approve or disapprove under, under a special permit. You mentioned earlier about sending a letter. Uh, upon receipt of that letter, that will be forwarded to the town council. I hope that answers your question. It does, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, gentleman in the back next to the TV. Thank you, Don Coelho, Lake Street, 511. Um, I'm a little confused because I attended over half a dozen planning board meetings yes. over the past two years. Yes. And was in complete sort of alignment and understanding of the development with the 13 or 14 homes. I forget exactly what it was. It feels to me like this is a bait and switch. 
because all those meetings I attended, it was never clearly communicated to me anyway, maybe I just wasn't listening to them, that th that was a process that was put in place to enable this development to come in the way that it is. So I'd like to understand with, with those hours I had listened and came in to sure. a couple of meetings. We at the very first meeting, it was discussed that this was um, in essence a stakeholder for him to come back and build the townhouse. We held him to a high standard. I felt in the back of my mind that maybe he would change his mind and that we would just walk through this, approve it in a few meetings, not be diligent in what we were doing, and then build 13 homes in a subdivision that we didn't have strict regulations. I recall you coming to certain meetings. And although we did not say at the beginning of every meeting, during the process, it was clear that he was doing this in essence, as a placeholder to reserve his right to build those homes. We were very strict with him. I'm going to embarrass him at some point. Towards the end of the process, we were putting conditions there, and they were, they were pretty hard and harsh. And I think you might have been there. And he just said, I'll do what you want. I just want to get this done. And we said, Well, we know you may not do it. But I'm going to treat you like you are, because I don't know what you're going to do. So that was what a meeting you came to. And I want to thank you. I want you to continue to come to the meeting. It, it was a two-year process. But we, we went through the process like he was in a building, because we did not. We were protecting the town as best we could. We didn't rubber stamp it in one meeting. OK, you're, you, know, you want to do this. That was not our approach. I saw the gentleman over there. Dave Nichols, Black Hop Street. I don't know how many of you know, all of that dark green is basically wetland. And what you're not seeing on the upper left side of that is Silver Lake. What would happen to all of the salt from the winter, all of the snow runoff that's maybe polluted, all of the fertilizing chemicals and lawn chemicals and so forth that were going all of those lawns. That's all our aquifer. That all goes into the lake. It goes in that wetland. It goes underneath Cross Street and at the other end of Black Mile Street, the south end, which is not a public road, is of town well. What's going to happen to our water supply? That's something we'll address over time. That's a couple of questions I had, not specifically everything you mentioned, but with regards to snow and runoff. And yes, that will migrate towards Silver Lake. And that's something we will address. Again, it is a special permit. We have the ability to approve or not approve. Right? That abuts directly yeah. to the wetland. I, I understand. And that, and although the applicant may not want to hear it, we are going to endeavor and we will work parallel with conservation as we go through this. Uh, do we still have anyone here from the conservation department? Uh, is that? That's correct. Okay. Or, would that, that, that is our plan and our goal. Anyone else? The gentleman that had here, yeah, I apologize for pointing about that. 434 Center Street. Yes, sir. Um, I understand this is in a complete water resource district area. That will be verified. And in that area, there are certain things that can be done and cannot be done with the soils. That's correct. Right. The contamination is one of them. I hope this board understands. I'm not that privy. I'm not an engineer to what extent can be done or not done in a water resource. But that's a drinking water in that area. Okay. And uh, we should pay attention to that. Please. I can answer your, your question two minutes. Number one, unfortunately, he can't be here. We have uh, an engineer on our board that is right up his alley. That will be something he'll be looking at. Also, it is something the uh, conservation department will be looking at, as well as this board. That will be thoroughly vetted 
from this board, and also when we do, is, I believe, a stormwater period. But I hope that addresses your question. Does. Thank you. something we know? Yes, sir, gentlemen. I'd like to again. make a very brief follow up to this gentleman. Certainly. I don't know who else has read these reports. I've read every last page, and I can point out where the engineer's report says there is no groundwater. Not we didn't find it, not that our wells didn't go down to it. There is no groundwater, so it's not an area of concern. I would flag that for the town and ask you to consider rejecting the engineer's proposal in its entirety and tell them to do a thorough proposal that examines groundwater and other issues under their impacts. So you might have heard the term peer review. We will do a stormwater peer review of an engineer of our choice that they will pay for. But we, we, we will vet that process out Thank you. through a peer review. I certainly, um, as a board member, I can't reject it out of hand. That's why we do peer reviews. And just to clarify for the people here, a peer review is something that we request the person to do it and they pay. Is that a fair assessment? Andy? Yes. <clears throat> So yeah, we, we're, we're going to have a few pair of you. Gentlemen in the front. Yeah, my name is Arthur Luna, 399 Prospect Street. Um, we are the newcomers. I got my neighbors, newcomers. We all got to purchase uh, the homes by uh, Prospect Street, which- Now you live in Franklin, sir. Right? Yes, but we have a, we pay taxes for this town too. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I know you have specific property. So, I'm on the, the fortunate ones, it's the most isolated from the all the impact that comes from row D on the right and row B on the left. Um, you know, uh, main concern is the, I would say, the noise and the intensity of traffic. When you hear, and even on the, my neighbors can confirm, uh, on, the purchase, on the time of purchasing, they were uh, instructor, they did this some diligence when they are acquiring their properties. They're saying uh, there is going to be a development behind Bellingham, probably be 17 homes, 14 homes, whatever their number is. And now it's 10 times the number of units, uh, maybe 300 cars plus delivery, deliveries, you know, Amazon, whatever is going on. And the time of the construction and the phases of this construction probably. Not going to be able to move all that inventory of real estate just like that. You probably will be, you know, a lot of construction going on, a lot of uh, interference on the day to day uh, of this small community, let's see, in Birmingham. That's fine. And that's a uh, concern that we have. You know, I know there's a traffic uh, engineer that's going to come to the next hearing, uh, but it, it is something that we really need to understand. Uh, and as you can see on the, on the proposal on road B, where the roundabout is and the uh, uh, activity center is, uh, the green belt is gone. There's no more green belt behind the one acre watts from the homes on the left side. So, you know, uh, I think what's being proposed of that second part, What's being proposed on road D and what's being proposed on road B is very invasive for the neighbors. Uh, and I'm not an engineer to actually talk about the water and the, and the storm water and whatever happens in there. But it, it, indeed, we all have uh, wells and we're all going to be impacted by that. And the interesting thing, how noise the noise that goes right in the middle between two homes on the left side to access that um, as an access road. And that's so to answer your question <clears throat> in generality. <clears throat> we will do a sound study and traffic study. <clears throat> Area here. That's all to this. Just wanted to add, <clears throat> excuse me. Just wanted to add that to his question that prospect state is also a city group. So I was going to get to that. Scenic mm -hmm. oh. yeah. um, I don't live. I don't. I live in Bellingham. I haven't driven out there. For the benefit of the audience here tonight, what's it been like since um, 
the storms in December on prospect. Terrible. Wow. Blood. There's no shoulders. <clears throat> There's is it the cave? Is it fair to say part of it's caved in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I can tell you about that. Okay, they lost the culvert part of the road. Okay, well, the best thing was when the building <laughs> collapsed, it <laughs> reached the wall, and it was the perfect time. I wish it took five years to get that repaired, you know. <laughs> we're, we're aware of that, and that's um, something we'll look close to Lake Street. There, there's a bridge, and yes. that collapsed uh, because of the storm, so it was closed. Uh, we see a lot of Amazon trucks driving through Franklin and then turning back because they don't read the signs when they come into the road. Or imagine how the how many deliveries and people that don't know what they're doing when they're delivering coming to that road B on the left and road D on the right. Because plus the heart of the whole operation, you know, I think the volume of homes is excessive, you know. Uh, I mean, I appreciate the, the board, you know, and being the due diligence with the 14 homes, but now we are on a situation 10 times worse. Where, where, where? Um, we will ask DPW to address concerns about traffic and the roads. Um, as best we can, we'll get, we'll get input from Franklin. Yeah. Uh, woman in the back of here, I haven't been over there yet. Hi, my name is Amanda. I'm the owner of 29 Lake View Ave. I'm the social media you probably keep referring to. There's <laughs> 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 300 plus names on it of residents of Bellingham, Franklin, and surrounding towns opposing this construction because we all have such concerns. That will be added to the record. I have a copy of that. I want to thank you for doing that. What if we get the number higher? Uh, we, we, we get just one, one, here. one question at a time. Sorry. Um, you, you, you can, uh, this will be submitted now. Uh, near the end, if you want to update it, by all means. Thank you. Okay. I want, I want to thank you for doing that. Thank you for hearing that. I do have just one point to add. Certainly. Um, I want to talk about schools and buses because I'm not sure if these houses will be in Franklin or Bellingham. Do we know that? They're mostly be in Bellingham. The only houses that I believe in Franklin are on Prospect. Now, if I remember going back to when the proposal was in front of us, there's some question about a driveway on um, maybe a Lake or Prospect that is being looked into and how is the road boundary changed over time and generations. And that's something we, we talked about when we wanted the, the homes and we'll look at it again. So we keep referencing 14 homes, which is valid, but now we are like the gentleman over there said, 10 times more homes. So Correct. the average family size in Bellingham, Massachusetts, um, 3.3 family members. So that's potentially 514.8 more persons to add to this area of our staff. What are we going to do with these kids that need to go to school? We'll need to add more buses. We'll need to add more schools. We'll need to add more camps. We'll need to add a lot more things than just adding homes here. That'll be something that we'll discuss as we go through this process. And um we can look at the impact on schools, I believe, with the town. But again, we're, we're, we're a little premature there right now. We, we will address that. Still valid points that need to be. I'm sorry? Still valid points that need to be. I don't want to diminish it. Thank you. But we will address that over time. And we have some big picture items we need to address. But that is a picture we will we'll solve. Thank you. Over here again. Hi, uh, we are from 381 Prospect Street, so right at the center of the proposed uh, road B. Uh, we have a one year old at home. Uh, the first bird that she saw was a turkey. The first animal that she saw was a deer right at the backyard. So, do we have any data on how many animals are going to be raised? In fact, I recently filled in a survey that turkey is an endangered species right in Bellingham and Franklin. And we had, a, I filled in a survey to say how many turkeys I spotted and it's an endangered species. So do we have any analysis or data to say how many birds, how many animals and how many trees are going to be fed? 
We have never, I don't believe, done that before. But I think that would be something to do to bring conservation to look at. Sir, uh, that's something conservation can look at. And when Dylan Jenner was posting, that question was erased in conservation. And also, based on our, our meeting, yeah. we, will, for what we will talk with conservation about the concerns that have been raised. Yes, so I'm his wife and the mother of the child. I have a couple of questions. Um, number one, we lived in Boston before we moved, moved to Franklin a year ago. We've lived in the cities all our life and we understand the constrained housing. So anything that helps like build multifamily homes is a great welcome to a state like Massachusetts. But I'm really hurt and like sort of, if I would say not at all happy with the process and lack of transparency in how this has turned out. Because last year, three months as a postpartum mom, I attended the call by a Zoom. And there was no mention, as somebody who is very recent to Franklin, I don't know what kind of meetings happen as an abutter to my home two years ago. There was no mention that this was all part of the big plan to get these many townhomes in this land. And all my time that I put in to read the reports and be part of this like 17 or whatever, 18 single family homes is just a sheer administrative process. It feels like a lie and the whole process doesn't feel fair to the normal like people, town people like us. Um, so that's something that I would request that from now on in the process, we be very fair. If we're doing something for the administrative purposes, please call it so and let us know the end goal so that everybody does their homework and spends the time more wisely. Um, to come and like talk in these meetings. That's number one. I think this is this goes beyond just this particular project. I think it needs to be fair and square and being transparent to what the end goal is. Number two, um, our home is like right next to all the primary road traffic that's going to go into the 156 homes. Um, so we would love to see like a proper study being done as to how many like, you know, cars are going to go there, what's the decibel level, what's the impact that it will have on our homes and like, you know, from a traffic perspective. And number two, like the sheer entrance of it is from Franklin. So we would love to know what's the collaboration with the town of Franklin from a planning perspective that the town of Bellingham is taking to approve these because there's going to be like a shared road and like not even shared road. the main road is from Franklin. What about the fire? What about the emergency services to this neighborhood? Um, a study and like probably talk about that will also be very helpful for us to hear moving forward. I don't want to address the first part of your question. I'd like to address the last two comments. Yeah. Um, we've mentioned several points. No, first of all, we were very transparent in the process. They went through for two years. But I think someone else is more than address that. In regards to working with the town of Franklin, over the past six months, we've been dealing with um, a development in the town of Franklin on the Bellingham border that's going to greatly impact the town of Bellingham, more so than the town of Franklin. We've been very transparent and working with that developer to address the concerns for the town of Bellingham. This town is very transparent in our dealings with the town of Franklin. I don't know if it's as reciprocal as it should be the other way around, but I can tell you this town, this board is very transparent in how we deal with the town of Franklin. And, and everything we do to afford us a town of Franklin. You want to address? Oh, yeah, just to, to address your first concern, I, you know, I um, just so everyone understands what happened, the, the applicant submitted a proposal to us to construct these homes. We don't have any discretion of whether or not we evaluate that and and render a decision. So those that that proposal is a viable plan that he could have constructed there was a the thought was is that this was being done solely for the purpose of preserving his his zoning so there was no like 
collusion. I don't want to get the wrong impression. There's no, uh, this wasn't done in tandem with the applicant. The applicant submitted a proposal and we evaluated it based on the zoning. In the back of our minds, we knew this is probably all for nothing because what he really wants to build is 156 counties. So there was no, uh, it wasn't anything that the town was sort of working hand in hand with the applicant to do. I just, I just wanted to clarify that point. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, we need the exact opposite. We held his feet to the ground. Okay. And literally, I don't think he, I've known Lou for a while. Um, and I apologize for embarrassing you. At the end of the meeting, I think the gentleman in the back was here. He just said, put it in writing, I'm going to remove We thought he would build, we planned, and we went through this process, that he could, could build those homes. Although in the back of our minds, we know it was not realistic. We went out to protect the town's best interest in vetting that like it was going to be built. <clears throat> we would not have gone through that process just as a maneuver. We want to think and treat it like any other development. So we are very, very transparent. And I, I think he will agree on how transparent we were. I'll get to you in one moment, man. Gentleman in the back in the orange. Can we, can we hear from the applicant of what this would benefit us? What are the benefits of this going in? Like, just a very simple question. Like, we should know... How is this going to help us besides just hinder the entire town? Like, what are the benefits? Sell us on it. At least try, you know? <laughs> I mean, you could just speak on it. Do you want to do that now, Lou, or do you want to, we'll wait till or do you want to prepare an answer down the road? I mean, it's a simple one. I, I understand. <laughs> is there a benefit? Is there one? That's why we're going to this front. Money. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. 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 So we're looking out for the interest of the town. We're here for the benefit of the town. Yeah, thank you, sir. To see the benefit of the town. I'm sorry. Is the applicant seeing the benefit of the town? We look at the benefit of the town during the application process. Okay. Yeah. It's a special permit. It does not have to be, but we have to go through the process and reach a, reach a, a decision accordingly. I can tell you this, if an error is made, we will hear about it. <laughs> but will it do any good? Um, I don't, I can't address that. It's a, it's a hypothetical, but we are going to set this like we did the other project. It is rather robust. It's a special permit. It gives us more latitude than a 14 uh, project subdivision. Uh, like, oh, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. No, you, you've been waiting. A uh, question about um, traffic control. Uh, is, are there any plans? I know it's Franklin with uh, Prospect Street. Are there any plans for this project that will provide any traffic control? I can tell you that there has been zero traffic control so far. How will this be different? What is there? There has been zero traffic controls. There's a danger of head on collision. Uh, it's a road that we have to use. I'm Marjorie Turner Holman at uh, 38 Victor Street. So we use Prospect Street. There has never been a hint of any traffic control. Are there any plans anytime soon? Since so far, there have been none. During construction. during construction. What we will do, the process we go through, is we have um, fairly robust plans and processes that have to be done during construction. We will work closely with the town of Franklin. As I said before, this town, um, we, go, we go out of our way to try to work with them. I, sometimes it's known as reciprocal. We hope that this can move forward in a more reciprocal manner. Um, our traffic study will address that. Um, traffic control, traffic volume. We, we will look at that. What is that going to cost the town? Does the town pay for traffic control? That is something we will 
look at and I um I know it's not a popular word on um man I, I thank you for all the work you do on uh on Facebook. I appreciate this and I'm not talking about you. Okay. Please, I don't want to be rather specific. People do not like the word mitigation. But as this process goes through, we will ask for, I'm going to use the word enhancements for the town of Bellingham if and when we get to the point of approving this project. Mm -hmm. I don't like the word mitigation because people don't like it. Who are you know talking about us online? We will look if it gets to that point about enhancements to the town of Bellingham if we get there. Yeah, I'm. I'm this is the very first meeting we've had. I'm mostly just concerned. I don't see any evidence on the part of the developer to be proactive on doing any kind of traffic control. So. I guess I'm looking for from the developer. If they didn't do anything before, why would they do it now? Um, if you earlier, I mentioned that I was probably going to ask for a meeting with the developer of the name. That's to be done uh, fairly soon, so you you can address those concerns. Thank you. All uh, right. If, if we need more than one. We'll 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 do more than one. I I see a hand by the window. Yes, hi, Bonnie Wheeler, two eighty nine Lake Street. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask the board to put in the notes when this goes, if this goes forward or whatever, to look at the water problem that's currently on Lake Street. My husband and I have lived at two eighty nine Lake Street for the past twelve years, and I take the train to Boston, so I come down Prospect Street every day. And so it's just been recently that the Prospect Street culvert has washed out. And so, and that was Franklin. But um, the last storm, maybe a week or 10 days ago, when I came home, I couldn't take a right on Lake Street to go home because the police had it turned out because of the severe flooding. Mm -hmm. So that's never happened. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that's got something to do with these houses that were recently built on Prospect Like so it, when it just rusted, you know, the topography of the soil and everything, the water's got to go somewhere. And so this is a lot of disruption. So I would like to ask the board if somebody would take that into consideration, what's happening on Lake Street? You know, those poor people that live there, and there must be people in that area. I think it's like a 400 block. I feel that these people's basements, if they're not already flooded, they're going to start flooding. I mean, they're flooded. Oh, they're flooded. Yeah, and you probably didn't have that 10 or 15 years ago, right? This is something new. So if the, if the board could take a look at that, I would appreciate it. And I think these people would appreciate it. That's something we will look at also to let you know we're very, um, and again, I don't mean to answer for the board. Anyone can pipe in. We're aware of clear cutting and the impact that has on the environment. Yeah. And that's something we'll address. Thank you, sir. And with, with, as best we can. Perfect. Thank you. I hope that addresses your yeah, did. Thanks. question. Uh, and to see two hands in the back. Uh, gentlemen, next to the last row with the shorter hair. We'll have the hat on. Eric Holmes. Just a quick two. What, what address there? Uh, five do ham away. Okay. Um, two quick things. One, I saw on one of the maps, Lake Street kind of doing a sweep. Is that part of this project or is that just something that's going to happen anyway, where you're going to get rid of the 90 degree turn, Lake Street, Prospect Street? And two, um, they said about doing tying into the town sewer. Yes, sir. Can the town handle that? And if they can't, mm -hmm. where are you going to put septic with all that water around there? That's it. That will be part of the stormwater management study. <clears throat> and the stormwater management study will look at the viability of capacity for the town of Bellingham. And if we don't have capacity, what the options are. Yeah, I didn't think there was any more capacity. And also the pump station. We've dealt with that on other projects. And someone suggested uh, another project of um, smaller size of doing our, our treatment. And we did not. We were not prepared. So that will be part of the stormwater. 
and then the link street of the just the that's something we'll deal with a different okay. Okay. that's not in my day anyway but as a board would be part of the things we look at again i hope that answers yes okay Hi, Pauline Aiello, 31 Lakeview. Could you explain what a water resource district is? And is this project completely in the water resource district? Partly in it? Right now, we don't have anyone in front of us uh, this evening from the DPW. I have not looked at the maps. Do you know what? But I, will, I can assure you this. At our next meeting, we have a gentleman who's an engineer. And if he was here this evening, he could fully address your question. We anticipate he'll be here. Can you explain what a water resource district is? It, it, it preserves the aquifer and the water area in certain districts within town. And also from a conservation standpoint, I'm not on the conservation board. It limits what you can do within a water, a water district. Well, I, I did a little research today. Yes, ma'am. And most of this area is in a water resource district. That was brought to his attention by the conservation department when he applied for the 14 houses. And if I correct me if I'm wrong, that resulted in litigation with the conservation department and the county of Bethlehem. So is that a fair assessment? Uh, yeah, that's fair. Okay. I don't understand why it's continuing this. It's because it is technically a different proposal. Yeah. Ma'am. And we can't cross lines. We so can't cross lines. Board, so that issue right now that's being taken up with Mr. Petrosi with that situation is with conservation. So once he files with them, I would recommend you go right. to the meeting. May I just make a, a statement? We all know that this was in a water district. Correct. Why isn't the conservation here along with you tonight? Because Number one, we, we don't do joint meetings. I believe we have a gentleman here from conservation. So. <laughs> I, I don't mean I apologize. No, I do you want to respond? Steve Kohler, Conservation Commission. I'm here learning as you are on this uh, because it's a different proposal. Mm -hmm. um, resource district. Is as it implies. It's water resource. It's our drinking water. That's what I thought. Yes. Um, you know, I can assure everyone here that Conservation Commission will vet this to the teeth with all the tools we have to protect our drinking water to the extent we have. Um, that I give you my word as, as just one commissioner. Uh, on a sidebar, am I free to speak? Certainly, sir. Um, this is great. I, I'd love to see this turnout. Do not let this quantity peter off <laughs> through this process. Um, the planning board and the conservation, we have some good tools, but we can't ad hoc just say no because we don't like it. We're, we're many people here for the 306 Maple Street that is in my backyard before this. Um, okay, well, it, it's, we would love for this, for anyone that's a, a enjoys nature and is a hiker and, and would love that to stay green space. Mm. Mr. Petrosi owns it. We didn't buy it. <clears throat> He's entitled to develop it and turn a profit as respectfully as, as he can. No, He's I understand. entitled for that. I, I just don't um, understand. So take this like energy, uh, not only come to these meetings, come to the conservation committee meetings, but keep that going through the process, maybe a year. So we usually see this peter off, and by the end, there's one here. But also take this energy, and if, if you review our bylaws, if you would like to see some changes. You heard Brian speak about zoning changes that got voted down. Get together, get it on the warrant, come to the town meeting. What's the turnout at the town meeting votes? Are we in single, low, double-digit percentage? Depending on the item, 
and she's a couple hundred and we've had fewer as 60. Now, I would love to see these town meetings break 50%. I don't think we get half that way. Um, so take this energy that you all have come here tonight and use that for the fuel to help <clears> dive into the bylaws, get warrants, write this town the way you want to see it. And that so, would be my opinion. May I just uh, say something to Bonnie Wheeler? That Lake Street does flood. That's not the first time. Yeah. It floods. Oh, yeah. Every so often we get flooded. Totally. The area floods out. May I just be a little more specific in my answer to you? Sure. And I apologize if I wasn't more specific. During the process of approving those homes, uh, conservation was a loss. That had to be addressed before you could do anything. That was one of the conditions, obviously, that we put in there. Just because we approved it, it had to be concurrently used the word concurrent for approval with conservation. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that. I neglected to mention that there was, well, I alluded to it, there was an outstanding action before we approved that. That was in the back of our minds knowing it wasn't going to be. That still is out there, has not been addressed. People have asked about changing bylaws for that. That's something I can't address this evening. Okay. All right. Thank you. Certainly. People are. Uh, we have two people that have had their hands up. Uh, um, yes, Theodore. Theodore and Leanne. Theodore. Uh, yes, my name is Ted Cloen. I live on Prospect Street. Yes, sir. Also, can you hear me? I can. Uh, I've also been on the Bellingham Town Finance Committee and ran one of the uh, uh, condo associations in town uh, in my days. Um, I just want to be direct. Uh, a lot of detailed questions and so forth, which are great. Uh, you guys have handled them very well. Uh, but I do want to be direct and just get my point out. Certainly. To me, this is a bait and switch. We had 13... Pro, uh, properties could have been multi-million dollar properties and now the developers coming back with 156 townhouses in our locale we should have learned from the past flooding where the culvert collapsed and my neighbors have fl had flooded finished basements learning that those six houses that were built on Prospect Street are changing the water table. Now, instead of having 13 properties, we're going to have 156. Traffic is over. I, I read the reports. Over 9,000 a day go through that intersection, Lake Street to Prospect. There are no lights. There are no sidewalks. It is one single lane both ways. And if you go through 7 to 9 a.m. or 4 to uh, 7 p.m., it is crazy. And I can't imagine what the statistics are in town of both towns in terms of traffic accidents. I see <laughs> lights there all the time. And lastly, um, you say this is in the interest of the towns. Well, thank God you have a special permit that you can prevent these 156 townhouses. And I, I, I will litigate. This is insane to have that at that intersection. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your comments. I, I, I don't want to be repetitive, and I, and I apologize. I think we've addressed the fact. Uh, I'm not used the word bait and switch. That that was your terminology. Um, he had that ability within the confines of the way our bylaw was written. All he did was look at the bylaw prohibiting uh, townhomes and reserved his right as a property owner. That anyone who owned that property had the ability to do it. If any one of you here owned that property, you could have done the same thing for either as the lender. 
legally we had to go through that process. There's one more. Is it Leanne Marino? Yes. Hi. Thank you. Leanne Marino from 12 Kensington Court. And I just want to bring up again, I'm a parent. I have three kids in the Bellingham school system. We are overloaded with kids already. We have jobs that can't even be filled. I can't imagine what 156 condo units will bring to our district, our school district, with the amount of children that are going to be coming into this, to these houses. We can't handle it. And I just want to say that a study needs to be done. Something needs to be done to make sure that if this does go through, something needs to be built in our town for additional schooling because we can't handle any more. I can only address part of your question. Okay, it wouldn't behoove me to address the second part. Um, we will um, approach the school department and find out what the impact would be based on the development of this size coming into town and the projected population. Now, this is a process. We haven't approved any. This is our first meeting. I suspect you're going to have a couple meetings with the applicant. But you know, we don't have all the answers this evening. We've raised a lot of great questions that we will go back and review the um, the audio and the video and uh, you make sure those questions are articulated by the appropriate departments in town. But you know, again, this is our first meeting this evening. But yes, we will uh, um, ask for input from the school department and also maybe the CFO uh, and or the um, town manager on the impact of the town. We're not gonna work within a vacuum and not get input from other departments because we do that all the time. And they do have department head meetings where we address specific projects on a monthly basis. And Lou is well aware that this will be discussed uh, at monthly department head meetings. So I hope that I addresses your question in regards to specifics of how to solve it. We'll, we'll reach yes. that process before we get the results back. Perfect, thank you. I hope that answers your question. I think there's three more in the chat. Uh, anyone, uh, anyone in the chat? Questions? Uh, I'd like to start to, um, unless it's something new. Yes, it's not. We've not discussed. Question for the town. We've heard discussion. Uh, so you've had, go ahead. You've had a lot of questions tonight. I have, and there's a lot of material. I understand, sir. We, we asked that we try to rotate the questions, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, there's been talk of numerous hearings over a number of years involving a lot of uh, resources from the town spending their time. There's a sunk cost to the town, to the volunteers, to the residents of the town. Uh, question for the town. Is there any ability to place guidelines, limits, or the number of proposals that you review, or is this at infinite? How many times do you have to review a change proposal where you're just going to keep changing things to see what sticks. It, it, it's an open, honest question. This only happens when we change a bylaw and we change the category of what his property is from one classification to another. And if you heard us earlier this evening, we tried to rezone Horseshoes on Maple Street, and we were turned in. So we have made, since I've been on the board, several efforts to try to control our growth in town, and has not been approved and or voted down at the town meeting. And again, this this board has done it. Uh, residents can do it, um, but he. Again, have the ability to go back 
reserve his right for the development, to set the development, and then come back and ask for what we anticipated he originally wanted. As I've said several times before, we vetted this process like it could happen for the benefit of the family. We certainly didn't um, rubber stamp it, wink and a nod, and give him a boom. He actually sued the town of Franklin and the Conservation Commission. So that gives you an idea how diligent we were in this whole process and how he was not pleased with the process. I hope that addresses your question. Thank you. I get just a few more questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, I live in uh, Oxford Drive in Franklin, right off of Prospect. Um, the, the, the applicant mentioned early in his brief remarks that he had approval from the town of Franklin. What approval did the applicant have from the town of Franklin? He was granted approval by the, I believe, the planning board. Yeah, we had subdivision approval for the planning board. For what, pro what project? For the uh, access on to Prospect Street. Oh, related yeah, to the subdivision. Related to this project or the original? No, related to the subdivision. To this project. The original project. Oh, the original project. Sorry, the estates. Answer the question. This project. Or to the was... subdivision. What do you mean? Yes. Which subdivision? The Which estates project? or this one? one? This, is not a, this is not a subdivision. This is. Which project, project? Did, the, did the town of Franklin approve? So the estates are the villages. Simple question. It's not a hard question. <laughs> so you, 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 you should get into it. We can't, you're, anyway, you're that's what right. you're here for. They approve the subdivision. All right. So, so the, the question then really is, you're saying that, that the town of Franklin may not work in conjunction with you as you'd like. So the town of Franklin has another opportunity to have what level of approval over this project? I believe so. Uh, what, what level of approval? I believe they will have to determine again to give him access out to front. The original access he got, he will disagree, was for that project. That project is not being built. We will talk to town council to determine if he has to go back and reapply for access to front. Right. <clears throat> All right, we'll, we'll make sure of that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. Frank will make, Frank will make sure of that. Yeah, we, we, won't, we won't approach our town. <laughs> Does that mean Town of Franklin can actually reject this particular 156 Town Hall's access point from Prospect Street? Yes, that's up to the Town of Franklin. Okay, okay. Well, great. I can't answer you. Yeah. 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 We can yeah. 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 so, yeah. yeah. so, yeah. yeah. so, I don't want to comment on another town board, but my understanding and having read the documents that was in Franklin, the Franklin public document was that there was a court case about access to the other, to the property that the 14 houses that kids could refer to. Okay. I'm not going to speak out of term, but the other town was involved in litigation about access to that other parcel. Specific, specific development. I, I don't want to talk about the legalese of it. There's a document that existed that said the old the old document that they had access to those 14 homes went to court and the town of Franklin found out that they were basically told, in my opinion, as non-lawyer, referring to another board's decision. Basically, you, you got access to it. Okay. That's what my understanding was. That's the document I saw on from Franklin. Not, that, that not this board. No. <laughs> well, Again, some of the town council is going to have to look at it, as the chairman mentioned, whether it was specific or not. Can't I'm not going to give, well, I'm not going to give a legal it, opinion on that. It came through the regulations. But it the came, regulations. It came to yeah, came to the regulations. The regulations. So, right, look at that. The yeah, the well, they, yeah, they couldn't deny it because of the way the regulations were written. Well, we we will ask our town council. If it's still there, we will find out. But, so, but it was a front. It was Frank. The, the question was, did they have access to that other property because they had to go through Franklin to get the bell? Okay. And yeah. Franklin came to the conclusion with the help of the courts. Fair. That maybe I won't ask the question. But anyway, there was a document that basically the public document of Franklin that basically said that they did. So we'll find out. It's Correct. There. Okay. It's Thank a you. public record. It's a public record. Thank you. 
and they determined they could not stop it. What okay. we will do is forward that document to our town council yeah. to you, determine. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, is it would it behoove behoove you to have Franklin Town Council members here going forward? Would they? No, okay. we feel comfortable with our own town council. Okay. All right. We we, we will. Okay. We'll, we'll deal with our our own town council staff. Okay. 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 I only like to spend a long time on a lot of questions. I'm going to ask maybe for four or five more, and then that we'll call it an evening. I believe they're pointing to you. <laughs> My name's Marty Cross, and I live at 49 Lakeview Avenue. Can't hear you, and Marty. I, I'm Marty Cross. I live at 49 Lakeview Avenue. May I approach the sure. diagram? Thank you. Um, if you want, you can straighten out while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, all the material was so helpful. And the first page of the plan shows some of the other roads here and the lake and cross street i would request that um on some of the other details not all of them but just some if blackmar could be shown and cross street going over the arcan bridge to where the pumping station is if town sewer would be approved um also right now on Blackmar Street, when you get into the extension that approaches your property, it is wet on both sides up to that extension. Um, having Lakeview Avenue and Mary and Bertine would just offer context to the people who live in this area. Um, so that's just a respectful request. And also there's a third um, a butter who isn't on your plans. There are two houses with the owner's names, but there's a third that's on the abutter list. It's not my house um, that should be added. And then um, I did some quick math. And if we have four parking spaces for each unit, that's over 600 cars if all the units sold. So the 600 cars would be entering or exiting from these spots. Um, that's just an observation. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have school age children, but I believe the parking, I mean, the bus pickup is at the end of Blackmar where it yeah. cross. So there would be another question as to how would the parents of all the children get their kids to some bus stop. And that's something we'll discuss. Yeah, I understand. I, 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 yeah, and thank you so I'll, much. I'll leave in the event that it moves forward. That it moves forward. Right. Thank you very much. All these are conditional on moving forward. And we're, we're keeping an open mind. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad everyone behind you. Okay. I see three hands. That will be it for this evening. Gentlemen over there in the glasses. I can I if that happened, I oh, so, so that's fine. Uh, Tim Twardowski, uh, I'm a resident of Oxford Drive in Franklin. Um, for the benefit of the audience, could the developer please tell us what, if any, permits and approvals they need from the town of Franklin to proceed with this project? Are you prepared to address that this evening? I'm not aware of any. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm aware of one. It is a big Okay. It's well established in Massachusetts zoning that access to a use is the use itself. In this case, both of their access roads cross Franklin property, mm -hmm. and that property is on RR1, which allows single family development, period. It does not allow multifamily. It does not allow townhouse. So in order for him to use the Franklin property as access to this project, he needs use relief in the form of a use variance from the ZBA. And thinking back to the approval that came from the planning board for the subdivision, that made clear, and the applicant in his application to this board also makes clear that these are not public ways, these are private roads. Correct. So that rule applies. So for him to sit here and tell the crowd that he doesn't need any zoning relief from the town of Franklin, you're wrong. We, we will look into that soon. And, I, you know, I do hope 
and I will be back at these meetings. I, I, I hope you will. As, as, as more information comes about, and I hope that the people who come to the Bellingham meetings will do the same when and if this goes before the Franklin. Mm -hmm. I have two more people back here. Yes, sir, gentlemen, uh, the way back. We... I, Roger Grisman, I'm at 404 Prospect Street. I wasn't aware of this other entrance coming out right across from my house. The lights are going to be shining on the road. I have enough time trouble getting out in Prospect Street. People coming off of Oxford Drive, and then I'm going to have fighting with them coming in on you. What, what, ads, what road are you talking about? Prospect Street. No, but what, what, what? Oxford Drive. Uh, the northern end. Road, road, road on the right road side here. Road 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 that wasn't approved that I know of. I never heard of a road going there. First time we've heard of it was the So that hasn't been approved by Franklin. That I, know I don't know if that's in Franklin property. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. We, we will address that. Okay. And as far as the, the noise, I hear Oxford Drive, all the cars, they have to stop, take off, stop, take off. They're going to be coming, stop, and going from that one and the other entrance too. They're going to hear all the stop and go when cars take and leave. When they put in those new houses, they clear cut it. This is a scenic road. They never planted, replanted the trees right. at all. Okay. And any tree that's over four feet and four inches in diameter is supposed to be replaced. On a scenic road, correct. I believe that was a scenic road classified in the county Franklin. Okay, any uh, one last question? So we're still in here. What? Yes, ma'am. You'll be the last person to see me. Uh, I'm Peg Forbes. I live on Oxford Drive in Franklin. Uh, we are very concerned about the noise. We have we hear the shooting range all the time. And with those trees coming down, what are we going to hear then? It's going to be right in our backyard. Um, the traffic. It's crazy now, even coming out of Oxford Drive, trying to get out in the morning. And we appreciate our neighbors putting up with us, you know, coming in and out. And delivery trucks for that type of development, what's that going to be? Mm -hmm. uh, the last concern I have is what good faith do you have? You just sat here and said, I don't have to do this. You're here to do this. Yeah. And you, it is, it's, okay, you can wave your hand, but it feels like. You just direct it to the board. Okay, it feels like a bait and switch. I, I mean, I've told yeah. you it's not. Yeah, it, I know it's <laughs> not to you, but it feels like a bait and switch. Just again, no, no, I don't want you. So, so that's what our concerns are. Okay. Is, there have been, we feel, misleading projects to lead to where we are now. What's going to happen going forward? That's our concern. We will address that. Thank well, you. It, it's not been bait and switch. I can't. It, um, it's not faith. on your part. It's good yeah. faith. But what good faith? I mean, we were, we were very transparent. No, we're not. I, mean, I understand that. So we can only do what the applicant right. has in front of us. Right. Now, what I'd like to do is getting late. Please, one more check on Zoom land. There's anybody I don't know. Anyone know on um, Zoom? But... Dennis? Any questions? Uh, Okay. Uh, just I understand that this is a preliminary discussion, and um, just so everyone understands what the process is, is that yes, the, the, sure. if everybody can stop talking to the show, they don't talk. So the the process, just in case you don't know, is that all of this is going to be peer reviewed. So engineers, the, there's going to be a traffic study. There'll be uh, a stormwater management study. Different uh, proposals will be given to an engineer that. The applicant pays for, but it works on behalf of the town and it's peer reviewed from a technical point of view. So that process will play out over a number of months. Um, so each one thing will be a meeting by itself, most likely. So traffic will be a meeting by itself. Storm, stormwater will be a meeting by itself. So um, all of these issues will be discussed. So with that in mind, I understand that this is a very preliminary discussion. Here are my concerns. The density of this project is way too dense preliminarily it it just looks like there's too many homes there i'm concerned about the traffic and the roads that uh will be into this system um prospect street and lake street are crazy roads the sight lines are uh limited and uh that's something that i think we're going to look at um I believe it would be appropriate for us to have the DPW director come into one of our meetings to talk about the infrastructure. You mentioned that, yeah. 
Yeah, um, if you could provide us with an estimate of number of school students that you believe will be coming from this project, that would be helpful starting point for us to review your project. Um, the um, it's been a long time. The I would believe that a site visit would be helpful. I think to get the lay of the land. Well, what uh, what I would like to do with that now, for the benefit is let's try to wait until it's a little dry. Right. Right. No, I get that. <laughs> and then the issue of access, if you can demonstrate to us, I know that you went through a legal process once before, but if you can demonstrate access to Franklin, that's probably going to be part of it. Okay. Okay. Um, echo a lot of those concerns and the concerns that I heard tonight. And I guess what I'm going to ask is please stay involved. Please come to the meetings. Please voice the concerns. We we definitely want to hear that. We definitely think about those things and as you bring them up. Um, we've got lists of you know questions that we're going to pose to you know town council and peer review. And there's a it's a long process though. You know, the lot. It wouldn't surprise me if it went over a year. Okay, so just please stay involved. Please come to the meetings. Um, we definitely want your input. And that's my last thing tonight. I'll echo what the other board members said. We appreciate you guys here. It's a work night, a school night for some. Uh, this is an exhausting process. Some of us have been here since seven o'clock. Between in person and Zoom, there are over 100 people attending this meeting. Um, it was brought up during the earlier discussions that a community meeting um, would be important. So yeah, at least one. I, at least one, and I think that we need to get that started as soon as possible. Okay. Um, there's one. There's a woman in the back who's raising her hand. No, I'm okay. I got it. Okay. Can I make a suggestion to the board? Uh, just uh, go go out ahead. across street. Just, I mean, we all heard the, the fire chief earlier say the capacity of this room was very limited. We can all feel the temperature of this particular project is fairly high. I suggest we find a venue that can accommodate the one. We'll, we'll, we'll look into that, sir. Excuse me. We will look into that. Um, I have a couple of comments I want to add before we finish. I'm going to echo the comments made by the <clears throat> fellow board members. Uh, Steve from the um, Conservation Board, we value your your participation. I am thrilled that we had to deal with a fire bylaw on attendance this evening. Let me happy. Yes, we will have to look the night you're on the agenda. We may need a bigger venue. That's something we'll look at. But as Steve said. As this goes on, it will go on over time. It's going to, you know, people are going to lose interest. Do not lose interest. This is your town. People in Franklin, they're our neighbors. We get along. We wish we could, you know, sometimes they're a little more open to us, but we're getting what we need. And, you know, I, I don't mean to be little um, our neighbors to the east. But our, our town is very transparent when we deal with a uh, development that may impact Franklin. Here are some of the concerns I have. Um, <clears throat> people have talked about Lake Street. Um, I'm very concerned about what has happened on a prospect with the road collapse. We're going to work in parallel with the conservation department. We will get input uh, from DPW, from the school department and the CFO if needed. Um, I want to look more into the pump station. I want to look more into the second access. We need more information on the second access from the fire department. The fire department is going to have a critical say in this. Because if I look at the overview, you're building triplexes? Three unit buildings. Okay, three unit buildings, which is a triplex. Although they're two bedrooms, 
they have to respect me. That is something this town will look at very diligently on the source of the water. Um, again, the emergency access, uh, how we tie into the pump station, what happens if we can't tie into the pump station. Um, down the road, snow storage. We also have um, the recycling center for Bellingham next to us. How is that going to impact uh, the water if we cut trees down? So we're going to look at a lot of things. We probably said, said it 10 times. This is a long process. We want you to participate and um, ask your questions. If you have questions during the week, send an email to the um, uh, planning board or um, yeah, just let us know. Um, a lot of people thought and they, the word bait and switch has been used a couple times. Uh, I, I want to be very, very transparent about my next statement. We don't work for you. We work for all of you. You elected us to represent the town of Bellingham. We will work through the process with the effort. But you elected us to do that. I think we need to get from the applicant when they will be filing with the Conservation Commission because there are a lot of wetlands on that site. And I think that's going to determine some of the density of this project. So I'm curious, when will you be filing? Well, our goal tonight would be, other than to introduce the project, would be to have the board select its peer reviewer and begin that process to review the various elements of the project these of the stormwater management, traffic, uh, other technical aspects of the design. And in the interim period, while that process is going on, the filing will be made with the Conservation Commission. Okay. I can't tell you exactly what date, but I can assure you that by the process will catch up with what you folks are doing. Okay. If we get further. But I think we need to have some, you know, we've heard a lot of good uh, questions tonight, a lot of information that's valuable to us. Um, but I think we need to start the process to know where we are regarding the traffic, the stormwater management, the infrastructure, as you say, the sewer capacity of the sewer to go in one way or the other. But I, I, yes. Go, go, go. No, my concern is. If conservation, which I think they will have some serious concerns about the various different vernal pools and streams and things on the site, then to do the peer review now where this project will most considerably change, we're going to just go around in a circle. No, but that's, but and so I, I would think it would be beneficial. However, we want to do this to do like a really, a really in-depth neighborhood meeting to really have you take a look at the issues and within that time frame file with the commission but, and because we run parallel with them and what i don't want to have happen is have us go through all this review and have conservation be six months out and then we realize they're not going to do a b c and d because of their rules and regulations and then we have to come all back again right. that we've always stayed true that we are going to stay as a joint peer reviewer running parallel but I, the I, board can can, can I interject? Absolutely. So the, I, I will tell you this: you're not going to be happy with my next day. Well, I'll preface it that way. And I, I know we have a good working relationship. Parallel is parallel. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you've not applied to conservation. We have a. Don't let me, let me finish, sir. We will not begin the process of any peer reviews until at least several things are done. Number one, we have at least one public meeting with the residents to get questions from them and answers from you to present back to the board. 
Okay. Then at some point, we want to get input from various town departments, including conservation, school department, DPW, um, CFO, and what, what other <coughs> departments. And we, we can do that internally as we go through this process. But working in parallel with conservation, Steve? Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you are correct, sir. It's to be parallel. It is. When you apply and you get the, you hear back from the um, neighbors, at some point we will look at doing peer reviews. Doing peer reviews now, I'm not comfortable. And I don't want to ask to take a vote on the board, but I, I suspect they may share my opinion. So, so are you are you are you Telling me that you haven't selected a peer reviewer, or that you're not going to even begin the process to select a peer reviewer? Is that what I'm hearing? No, that's not what I said. Sir. Please. So not what I'm, I asking, said. I'm asking you a direct question because, you know, obviously, as you said many times tonight, we pay for the peer reviewer. Correct. And whether or not the peer reviewer has to do things two and three times over, regardless of whether or not we're in front of the Concom or someone else, it would be our um request that the peer review will be selected and that there are some things that are not going to change on this plan so well, not going to change and so for us to be held hostage by these prerequisites before a peer review is going to be hired or begin its review that's i think a little bit unfair okay okay so i i don't believe i'm holding you hostage well all i'm asking for is the board we we, we will check to uh, to select a peer reviewer. But we're not going to do that. I apologize. We've actually meet with the public. I want to get the responses back from the public and internal departments. We know we know what peer reviewers we can use for specific topics. We're not going to choose those in the next two weeks. It, it sounds like you just implied that. Things may not change. I want you to sit down and hear from the people. Then come back and if you want to reassess, that's fine. I share a concern with a fellow board member about the density of this project. But I, again, it is premature. I don't want to say more than that. We need a full net this. Part of the process is, and we've been doing it now for a while on projects, is having you meet in the venue with the neighbors to specifically address their concerns and try to work through their concerns and their questions. So may I ask them, what do you consider to be the neighbors under this, the whole town, the town of Franklin? Or the, town the, the people who are in this room. The butters. All of us are butterless. Dear butters. Dear butters. Well, so many folks are not necessarily butters, so I don't know. The Ox, you want to include the Oxford Drive yeah. people? The whole yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. What we will do is we will notify the public. Or you? No, it's when, on, well, it's always on them. No, I, I, I have no problem with notifying. Just give me a scope of what you think or expect us to notify. I'm not going to go on social media. I, I'm not asking. I'm, there's, no difference to living over there. I'm not, not asking. So, I, I, certainly, I certainly have no objections to like members and going through each and every issue that they've raised tonight. What I would say, I think please. what happened with North Street is they had basically the applicant put out a letter. This is where we're meeting. They found the venue. They had all the people come. They aired out all the concerns. They came back and they said, these were all the concerns. This is how we're addressing them. And they brought it back to the board. Okay. And they picked a venue that all of these people could go to and just vent their concerns. Um, has everyone signed it? First of all, has everyone signed it? Yes. No, we can sign it. Please well, sign it before you leave. Yeah. Right. Mr. Chairman, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to work with Amy and we're going to come up with, you with a, a scope of what we consider to be the extent of the, let's call it the neighborhood. And obviously yeah. other people outside the neighborhood, but those are the people that we're going to notify. 
Correct. And then anybody else that wants to bring a friend or an enemy, whatever they are, <laughs> they're welcome to come too. And we'll have yeah, no, no problems having a very complete conversation about what we're doing and how we're doing it and how, right. how it transpired. Correct. Right. Okay. This, this bait and switch thing really bothers me. You've heard me respond to that several times. You certainly can. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to clarify something a little bit, just for myself, understanding your position. We're certainly not conditioning the peer review on any steps that the applicant has to take. That will engage the peer review of the appropriate process. Our strong preference is to do it in conjunction with conservation because we don't want to, we, you know, but I don't think Bill is conditioning the peer review process or commencing the peer review process on any steps being taken. No. It is our strong preference that and and future meetings will then will just have to be synced up to conservation anyway. I, I understand, yeah. but during the last process, the uh, conservation commission and the planning board used the same peer reviewer to do both, and we're not going to agree to that. So, the conservation commission is perfectly within its right to hire its peer reviewer. We're not going to share the same peer reviewer with the conservation commission. If the planning board wants to get its own peer reviewer, that's fine. We'll pay for both. But we're not going to have one guy reviewing it for both boards. Well, I think that can be for a future discussion, perhaps with Amy and perhaps with the town officials. But two again, they, they have two different jurisdictions and they have different rules and regulations that you folks have, and, and they shouldn't they shouldn't be co mingled. We'll address that in the eighth. Okay, is that a fair assessment? And can thank I, you. Um, can I go to Florida? Can I go on vacation for a couple of weeks? You certainly can. What are we thinking for time? What do we need for time? For what? For continuation, or what are we thinking for? What do you want done in between that time when we're looking for another meeting? I love, I like to. Um, when do you want to do the meeting? Oh, Bob's going on vacation. I'm staying here. Bob's going on vacation. Fine. Here we go. Excuse me. It appears we'll um, have a motion for to um, continue to the 14th of March. And the deadline. So this one. Yeah, the deadline. So you said one. Deadline extension. We need the deadline extension of March 29th. March 29th. March 29th. What? Do you want to do it to like July? Yeah. So that's the first time. No, I'm July. I've never had to do this in ten years. Just please calm down. We're trying to get an extension on the deadline. Two years, March 14th, and try to keep this being the only item with all the rest. March 14th. That's what we're trying to do. Will be the next meeting. In the interim, we will notify you of a public meeting. March 14th, we will endeavor to have this as our only topic for the evening. June 28th is the deadline. June 28th is the deadline. So on, on that time, at March 14th, we're not going to have any peer review. No, we're not going to come back with your meeting. Please. Yeah. You can talk, but you can't be respectful. You don't shush somebody. You do it respectfully. You say, excuse me. I apologize for that. Thank you. But I have a lot of two words in it. On March 14th, we're going to come back here and we're really, we're going to have our meeting with the neighbors. We're going to sort of present answers to the questions that were asked through our neighborhood meeting. All right. Is that what I mean? Potential changes to your plan. Okay. And I can assure you that by that time we will have a filing of the conservation commission. But again, I'm, I will I'm not going to have the same peer review. We will discuss that with the conservation. I can't answer it. Okay. It's not fair for me to. Step in to another process. So um, you want me to write something else on extension? No, I have it right here. Oh my God. So we are good. So we're going to continue the hearing till is that okay? March 14th? Yes. And with an extension deadline date of June 28th.
March 14th will be the next meeting. Continue. And the decision deadline. This was set for June 28th. That, that, that's not written in. No, it ain't. Yes, but that's what you can do. Sign that. It doesn't make a decision. One comment for the sign team. Are you following the following I can't hear you. What one? Replication in Bellingham is two to one, not 1.99. All right, yeah. it's only 500 feet. So, try and get ahead of it. So, folks, we're going to continue to have a meeting. And if you can, even if you talk out in the hallway, it comes back, back in here. So if you could talk outside, that would be helpful because we still got a ways to go. So, if you could help us by talking outside, thank you very much. I can read, Josh. It's okay. All right, let's keep moving. All right. All in favor? Yes, I'm still on. 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 Are we all interested to read the minutes from our last meeting? Yeah, there's one. There's, there's one from October 26. Um, this is a longer meeting. Tina, had just gotten these. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I just want to make sure that we get the right one. That was it. was a late one, but she was. Um, yeah. She had just. Stuck on them. No need for any force. I do. But we're in a meeting. Oh, go. Uh, oh, system that's baffles. Checking out in the last two years and failing constantly. And either a split or a fraction by creating a vacuum. It's losing its prime every couple of weeks. Okay. And it can't handle what it's got now. It's never going to handle this. I'll bring it up in a meeting. Frank, come to a meeting. Oh, well. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I just put in the middle of business. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we have October 26th. Do we have a motion to accept the October 26th? Thank you, Gary. Meetings in Britain. So moved. Second. Down. All in favor? Set aside. Brad. Bill I. Bill I. Thank God. Okay. And then we have December 14th. Make a motion to accept the minutes from our last meeting. So moved. Yep. Second, Bill. Satisfied. Still on. Still on. Thank you. Okay. And then I think. How are you? Uh, so, is there a point? 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 Is there